All right, and we are back live, well, live this time with Destiny. And uh, it seems like he had a few issues with uh, some of the stuff that I said. I think he had a response video to the video that I had on my channel. I think it's my channel trailer. And uh, he expressed a bit of contention with some of the statistics, some of the graphs and things like that. So I decided, hey, why not try to have him on again to further discuss? It seems like we might have some unfinished business, if you may. And so, Destiny, thank you for taking the time today. Hey, thanks for having me, buddy. So I guess we should go through this bit by bit, chunk by chunk, argument by argument. Uh, I want to start out From first the with uh, the causal link between the Australia gun buyback program and the lower homicide rate. Uh, you expressed a bit of contention with my argument on that. Do you care to elaborate? Well, yeah, so my contention wasn't necessarily with your argument. I just thought that your graph was, like, horrendously doctored. Okay, well, I, I did not doctor my graph. I was using the AIC statistics from the Australia Yeah, but you websites. cut it off, like, literally three years after the buyback on the highest homicide point, and it was a little suspect, because I'm familiar with those numbers, that in the next few years, the rate dropped by, like, almost 50%. It seemed a little right. disingenuous. Right, it, it did drop, but that, that wasn't my point. My point was you were applying a causal link to the Australian gun buyback program in 1996, and I was just saying that it can't be if the homicide rate in America dropped even more substantially than the homicide rate in Australia from, from the 90s. Can you explain what I was, why? Well, I don't know why. I'm just I'm just. Well, no, no, no. So you just to... said that, so, you, so your argument was there is no way that the gun buyback program in Australia could have caused a drop in homicides if the U.S. homicide rate fell as well. Can you explain how those two things are connected at all? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're, you're applying a causal link to the Australian gun buyback program that happened in 19, 1996, and I'm saying that if that were true, then number one, it was the largest gun buyback program that they had. They destroyed, you know, tens of thousands of guns. It lasted six weeks. And their homicide rate, what I was trying to show was that their homicide rate was 1.6 per 100,000. And a full six, seven years after that, it stayed pretty much the same. While America's homicide rate since the 90s dropped from 7.4 to 5.5. So it dropped even more substantially than the homicide rate did. You can go all the way out to 2006, 2007. That doesn't matter. That wasn't my argument. My, arg my argument was debunking the causal link that you argued between the ho Australia gun buyback program and the drop in That's homicide right. rate. I understand. So I just want to razor focus on this, okay? So one okay. more time, okay? Why is it that just because America's homicide rate dropped in the same time period that Australia's didn't, does that mean that their gun buyback program somehow wasn't successful? I'm asking you, how are these two things possibly linked together? Could we not conceive not... that America, that something happened in America that also caused the homicide rate to drop while simultaneously the gun buyback program might have impact, impacted homicide in Australia as well? Can't these two things be totally disconnected? They could be, but I'm not the one applying a causal link to strictly the gun buyback program in Australia in 1996 to the drop in homicide. I'm saying there could have been things that happened in America. That's my point exactly. We didn't have a gun buyback program. Didn't we have a 1994 rate. assault weapons ban under the Clinton administration? Didn't we also have the 94 yeah, Brady we did. Act in crime bill? In 1994 to 2004, we still had 17 mass shootings. And actually, as a matter of wait, fact- wait, 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 hold on. Wait, wait, without running off, without throwing a ton of numbers, I'm just, I'm trying to establish that, that your argument right now is a non sequitur. So you're trying to say that Australia's gun buyback program couldn't have been successful because somewhere else in the world, homicide dropped. What I'm trying to illustrate is that these two things are totally non sequitur. They have nothing to do with one another. They do. You're pivoting. I'm not saying it wasn't successful. I'm saying that the drop in homicide rate in Australia cannot be solely because of the gun buyback program in Australia if our homicide rate also dropped. And also, Why? They're, they're, well, they're, their gun buyback program well, no, no, well, I'm asking, one, why is it that that couldn't have been successful in Australia, but the U.S. homicide rate still dropped more? Well, how does that logically follow? I'm not saying it, it may have it may have had some effect. I don't know. All I'm saying is the gun buyback program in Australia was six weeks. And for seven years, the homicide rate 
was left unchanged. It did drop after that. It did drop in 2003, I think. And I think we're around like 1.1 or 1.2 or something right now. But what I'm saying is we did not have a gun buyback program in America and our homicide rate dropped substantially more, a lot more than Australia's did. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that the 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 homicide rate in the 90s in a lot of Western countries was higher than it is today. And so I'm okay. saying I'm you so... cannot you cannot put these two together. Sure. These I'm not, not trying to put these two together because it's, I, it doesn't. America's homicide rate has nothing to do with this argument. It would be like saying I have cars in two different countries. Your and causal what... link. No, no, no. Okay, Between, well, hold on. So let's say I have let's say I have cars in country A and cars in country B. Okay? okay, let's say that in both of these countries you don't have to wear seatbelts. Let's say that in one country you mandated seatbelts. Let's say in that country the amount of um, people that died in car accidents like didn't go down as quickly as it did in the other country. That doesn't mean that the seatbelts like mandated in the first country didn't do anything. These are totally disconnected. There, we could sit here and hypothesize a number of reasons why homicides dropped in the United States. Yeah, but you're saying that it was because of the gun buyback. Yes, but you're not arguing against the gun buyback. You're not giving me anything. I am. I'm. I'm not. I'm saying America's that decrease in violent crime or homicides has nothing to do with whether or not the Australia gun buyback was successful. They're totally disconnected. They're, they have nothing to do with one another. You're saying that the homicide rate in Australia dropped solely because of the gun buyback program, and I'm saying, how can that be? If for seven years it remained the same afterwards, and also. Other countries' homicide rate dropped as well with no gun buyback program. That's all I'm. That's all I'm saying. You're you're applying a causation, and I'm just trying to argue against that. And sure. So if you, if you wanted to argue against it, we can argue against just that point. But citing America's homicide rate, especially when it's still three or four times that of Australia, doesn't make your argument. Yeah, it's just that, totally non sequitur. Once we'll get into that, we'll get into why why our homicide rate is a little bit higher. But I want to also mention, too, as well, that there are more, there are about 400,000 more legally owned guns in Australia than there were before the 1996 gun buyback program. So that's another point into the uh, gun buyback program not causing... Wait, how do you think that's a point rate. into the gun buyback program anything? What is the increase in the percentage number of guns? Are these guns owned by people? Did it expand to the number of households that own guns? Or are there just individual owners that now own more guns? What does that number even mean? What I'm saying is is that, number one, we, we went off of the homicide rate, left unchanged for seven years after the gun buyback program. Wait, hold on real quick. All, Can you're you... saying it was successful. You're saying it was successful and it caused the decrease in, in homicide. Okay. Okay, that was your causation that you're applying there. We we already gotten past that. I'm saying that also on top of that, there are four hundred thousand more guns in Australia owned than before the 1996 Port Arthur massacre. So you would you would think, and and the per capita rate has increased just slightly. The per person rate has increased just slightly. You would think that if you were correct, that also their homicide rate would would increase because of that, because of increase in 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 guns because that's what you're that's what you're implying no <laughs> wait what hold on there's so much that just got said um firstly i don't know if increase or decrease in guns necessarily means anything um i think we would look for households that own guns right because for instance in the united states i believe that there have been periods of time where the increase in guns in the united states is, is a thing but then the number of households that own guns decrease right so less people less households have firearms but more households that have firearms are buying an increased number so I, this isn't like not connected at all um, that, that's not that's not true there, there's true. actually more guns in America, gun ownership in America today than there were in the 90s. Sure, but it doesn't scale and, and linearly. But it doesn't scale linearly. Sure, but it doesn't scale linearly with like the number of firearms in the United States. What I'm just saying is, you're applying a causal link between the increase in guns and and homicide, and you also applied a causal link between. Wait, the and gun actually, hold on. I think what you just said is not true. I'm sorry, I'm just looking this up. The continuing decline in household gun ownership in the United States. So it looks like right now in 2014, we're at one of the lowest points in history, assuming that this is correct. With how, um, how many, how many, how many uh, percentage, what percent of the population owns guns? Because 30 to 35 percent, like 32.5 percent. Last I saw it was somewhere around 40 percent, just above 40 okay, percent. Not I'm to saying, mention we have more states that have concealed carry laws than in, than in the 1990s. But, which is another non sequitur. That has nothing to do with anything. It's it totally yes, it does yes, it does, because you've also applied a causal link between 
uh, concealed carry, lax gun ownership, and increase in crime. But sure, which is something that I saw point out in a meta analysis that we can look over if you don't. But yeah, no, yeah, um, okay. no worries. So I mean, like, we, so let's move let's, on well, from the well, yeah, Australia. we can. But I feel like we haven't even like um. So. Do you, do you you understand that like talking about America's homicide rate has nothing to do with whether or not a gun buyback in Australia was successful or not, right? Or do you still yes, not? Yes, it does. If your argument is that Australia's homicide rate decreased since the 90s okay. because of the buyback program, of course it does. Because as I've said before, and I'm going to try to say this again and try to repeat this again, a lot of Western countries, crime was higher in the 90s than it is today. And so what I'm saying is just because the crime decreased since the 90s in Australia doesn't mean that was because of the gun buyback program. All I'm saying is sure. I'm refuting your causal link. Oh, no, no, no. So that could be true. Right. But you have to establish that somehow. You can't just give me numbers from another country and say that rebukes but that. But you're not establishing how the gun buyback program decreased the homicide rate in in uh, in, in Australia. I don't even think they they correlates let alone having a causal link okay yeah i mean i guess we could dig into whether or not we, we feel like it does or it doesn't but just citing like another country's homicide rate has nothing to do with whether or not the australia gun buyback was successful that's all i'm saying like we can make the argument that so maybe so if you want to make the argument for instance sure they had a gun buyback program however crime would have dropped anyway then that's fine then we can but that's 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 exactly what i'm what i'm saying right uh Okay. Um, I mean, we can actually spend a minute like digging into this if you want. Effect of Australia gun buyback on homicides. I got time. We can look. We can look and we can read. Okay. Give me a second to absorb some information, all right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't even believe that it can that you can correlate it to um, mass shootings either, because if we look at the mass shootings prior to the 1996 gun buyback program, there were none. So there were no mass shootings prior to the 196, 1996 gun buyback program from 1996 to uh, from 1986 to 19. Oh, sorry, there was. So from. All the Wait, way up until 1986. We're ignoring the Port Arthur massacre that like instigated the legislation, or yeah, that was that was 1996. Six, yeah. From 1986 to 1996, there was four, and then after the 1996 uh, Port Arthur massacre, uh, there was one Monash University shooting, two killed, five wounded. So. You know, prior to it happening. Wait, wait. What did you just say? End. You said there has been some since then. Yeah, there is one. Two killed. I mean, that's not a mass shooting under our standards. Where we have our definition is three or more killed, but but that's uh, in 2002. My my, what I'm saying is is that there was there were no mass shootings pretty much all the way up till 1986, and then mass murders in Australia as well. If we look at 19, about the same time. So once again, crime was higher in the 90s than it is today in a lot of western countries and that's all i'm saying i'm saying that it was probably going to go down anyway the the homicide rate in australia just like ours went down anyway sure i mean like so that's I what can, I'm arguing. I, so like i can get on board with that because that was kind of my position before although i've been moved um a little bit by arguments that i've seen otherwise um i'll just kind of like read this thing here so, <clears throat> Tim right, Fisher, but, what? But if that was your position before, I mean, in your call, you had a fan call in and you said that gun buyback programs, homicide rate in Australia decreased because of that. That was your quote. I don't think it's solely because of that, right? right. Gun death is I like don't. a highly yeah. multi, there's a million different things that could nest, that could potentially cause it. But it did seem like gun deaths and suicides fell post the banning of that. Now, could they have fallen anyway? Maybe. It's really hard to say it. I mean, violence has fallen around the world. Um, that being said, the United States, even though it fell, was still, what, two, three times higher than that in Australia? Like, so, I mean, like, it is factual. But to it fell at a larger percentage. But th that's because it's already at a higher percentage. I mean, like, if a guy that's 100 pounds, you know, loses five pounds, and a guy that's 200 pounds loses, you know, 40 pounds, 
I mean, like the, the, the larger guy lost more weight, but it might be harder for the smaller guy to do it because he has less weight to lose. I mean, I know there's like a million different examples there, right? Like to, to decrease your, um, wait, actually, did it even fall at a larger rate? Wait, do I even let, wait. It did, it went from 7.4 to 5.5 from the 90s from 1996 oh that's america's homicide rate so it didn't actually fall at a larger rate i shouldn't even let you get away with that one fuck what do you um, of course it did it it dropped for, for what i'm saying is mm -hmm. from 2000 and from 1996 to about 2002 or something like that mm -hmm. the homicide rate in america went from 7.5 to about 5.5 so it, it fell at a <laughs> at a more substantial rate then Australia's did. That was that was my. So in Australia went from what to what? Australia went from. Let me pull it up again. Australia went from. I just had it up. Uh, one point six to one point eight, and then after two thousand one, it fell even more to like one. So okay, wait. So at... it started at one point six, and then start, and then went to one, right? So yeah, you but, recognize that seven point whatever to five point whatever, that's actually a smaller drop than one point six to one, right? What? What? So from seven point four to five point five. Mm -hmm. so we're talking two points yep. from, and then from one point six to one point one. Yeah, I believe that's. I think the first one I think is a smaller drop, or it's close. No, it's, of course it's not. It's close. Yeah. And anyway, but we can we can move on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. You Go recognize ahead. that like going from like the percentage change from 10 to six is less than the percentage change from two to one, right? From 10 to six yeah. might be four points and two to one might be one point, but from 10 to six is a 40% 40, 40 decrease, but from two to one is a 50% decrease. So technically it's not I'm even not... true that America crime fell more. It only looked like it on your graph because you plotted both numbers together, which you probably shouldn't, but a decrease from seven something to five something is like a 20 or 30% decrease. If Australia's went from 1.6 to one or whatever, that's over 50% or not, that's not over 50%, but that could be like a 30 to 40% decrease. No, it's, it's, it's about, yeah. What I'm saying is you're, you're the one who's saying that homicide rate in Australia decreased because of the gun buyback program. That was your I said I think, I, yeah, I, I said it's, I, I, it seems to be that that was part of it. That's what researchers okay. seem to say. Sure. Part but it's probably it, not the uh, only reason why. I'm sure there are a ton of reasons why. I'm sure there, are, there probably are a bunch of reasons. Okay. So, anyway, the, the next thing. Oh, yeah. Wait, oh, I just wanted to just to hammer this home because these are true facts. Now, for the reason why, I guess, that we can debate. But um, <clears throat> since the Howard government introduced stricter gun laws in 1996, and since it's 96 and 2003 gun back took place, um, a reduction in gun deaths in this country occurred, blah, blah. Okay. In the last two decades following the reforms, the annual rate of gun deaths fell from 2.9 per 100,000 in 1996 to 0 0.9 per 100,000 in 2016. So that's like a 66% reduction. That's a huge that's deduction. That's gun deaths. But you, sure, that's gun deaths. Yeah. So, overall yeah. homicides. Sure, so, We're talking about overall homicides. Sure, so, you said your main driver is to yeah. save lives. It doesn't matter how they're killed. You look at the increase on the same statistics from the AIC. You look at the increase in, in knife deaths as well. Do you have the numbers for the increase in knife I, deaths? I don't have that, but I'm looking at the homicide rate staying the same for seven years after the 1996. Can you link me the stats with the homicide rate staying it's the same? It's on that AIC website. You can go there if you want to look at it. So, okay, when you said that the deaths remained the same, was this the per 100,000 rate or was this the raw number yeah, of homicides? The homicide rate, the homicide rate per 100,000 from 1996 to 2002, it remained exactly the same. Seven, that's seven years, six, seven years. And the gun buyback program lasted six weeks. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying you can't say that homicide rate in Australia decreased because of the gun buyback program like you did. That's all I'm saying. It's not, it's not because of, you can't say that that's the reason. Right, you applied a just... causal link and that's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, I can't like 100% substantiate right. a 100% causal link. I'm just right. saying that it's it going down anyway. Some impact. So was ours. So was every other Western. Well, but country. you can't. But now you can't flip on me and do the same. It's like, oh well, it was definitely going to go down anyway. You can't know that. Well, I do. Of course, I don't know that it was going to go down. I, I mean, I was a kid in 1996. But what I'm saying is, you look at the statistics and you see the homicide rate mm -hmm. going down since the 90s. In, okay, in a so lot of Western countries. Yeah, so I'm looking at the homicide rate. So this is homicide incidents, victims, and offenders. So in 1990, it looked like the rate was 1.8. Um, mm -hmm. 1996. In, sure. Looking at the gun buyback program, 1996. Okay, so in 1996, it looked like it was 1.6. Mm -hmm. 1.6, that's what I have. And now it's at 1. So it seems like the homicide rate has fallen, like substantially. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is. Well, you just said that the gun has, deaths were replaced with knife deaths, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. Wait, 
well, of course, if you what I'm saying, the gun the gun buyback program lasted six weeks. They destroyed tens of thousands of guns, okay. tens of thousands of guns within a matter of six weeks. So what I'm saying is if you are applying a causal link between the gun buyback program and Australia's homicide rate decreasing, then you would expect to see that within a matter of months or something that's like that. That's not necessarily true. You that's could have out no, this is why you need more than this is why I grilled you on on drawing your graph and cutting it off at 2001 because you need more than a few years to establish a trend. It's entirely possible. Yeah, not to mention the fact that there was another buyback program in 2003. But I mean it's possible that for one or two years the homicide rates were just a bit higher than normal. I mean if we go through the the homicide rates as they are, we saw outlier years prior and outlier years after from a 1.2 to a 1.4 to a 1.2. Like this is why we collect multiple years of data in order to establish a trend. And this is why, I, I mean, we look at the homicide rate dropping in many Western countries, including America. This is why I'm saying we can't say without a shadow of a doubt that the homicide rate, and I'm not the one applying this causal link. You're the one who said that in that quote. That's all I'm saying. Well, hold, well yeah. So I'm not, I would never make the argument that there's a 100% chance that redu that uh, the gun buyback program got like cut down <laughs> on the number said. of homicides. I said, that, I said that it seems likely that it contributed to it. No, sure. I have the quote. It's from your call in, your fan that called in. You said homicide rate in Australia decreased because of that, mentioning the gun buyback program. Okay. If I said decreased because of that, and you thought that I meant was solely the reason for, then I either misspoke or I came across unclear. But clearly, there are a number of things that play into where homicides come from. And it seems like in Australia, the gun buyback program seemed to contribute to a decrease in the amount of homicides in that country. That seems to be the case. Now, maybe it wasn't. Maybe there, are, maybe it would have fallen anyway. Maybe there are a number of other things that caused it to fall. Um, those are all potential things. I mean, for that, we can dig into articles specifically relating to that, since uh, apparently the numbers themselves aren't necessarily enough, which I agree with you. We would need to dig in more if, if you really wanted to. I we just would. Don't... That'd take a whole video, probably. Sure, yeah, and that's fine. Anyway. I mean, we can do that, too. I'm sure that would be a fascinating discussion. But the numbers alone don't prove that it did nothing. Um, that's that, that would be quite an extraordinary claim to make, I think. All right, so if we move on to the causal link that you applied between more lax gun laws and uh, concealed carry and, and homicides, I, I want to touch on that because you expressed some contention in your response video. Um, on your on your channel as well with that mm -hmm. um, what were the points of contention that you had on on my argument for that um so i believe that the let me find this here so <clears throat> from our good nber i have um the quote that i pulled from this article was or this study i guess the best available evidence using different statistical approaches, panel data regression, and synthetic control with varying strengths and shortcomings and with different model specifications all suggest that the net effect of a state of state adoption of RTC laws is a substantial increase in violent crime, 13 to 15% higher. Um, and then I can shoot you this. Where were the, the sample sizes from? Do you, can you, sh do um, you know? I, I shot you the study, um, and then I can read through. I'm sure it's not listed under the methodology or something, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you can just read through it. Just sure. I, I linked it to you if you want to look as well, but uh, I'll start scrolling through. I just want to know what sample sizes they took from that. So you're saying that uh, when the what is this to do with uh, constitutional carry? When constitutional carry laws were enacted, then crime rate increased. Is that what they're saying? Um. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. I guess I just need to know where the the sample sizes are. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be going over like multiple studies, so I don't know what the Sure. So that causal link between more lax gun laws and uh more gun crime or con conceal carry, constitutional carry, Vermont carry, whatever you want to call it, and and more gun crime or more violent crime or more homicides. Mhm. Mm um, I don't think that we can, I, I don't think that we can apply a causal link to that either because of the data that I have seen. For instance, if your argument is more lax gun laws equals more gun crime, mm -hmm. which if I'm not mistaken, that's your, that's your argument, correct? Um, not necessarily. Okay. I think my, what this paper seemed to say was that if you, increase your adoption of right to carry laws that what will happen is violent crime will increase 
I mean, where, like I said, I, I don't know where that study's from. Is it from Mississippi or is it from, you know, where, I mean, they, they could have taken bits and pieces or little samples of. Okay. Of I mean, this is pretty rich country, considering you literally talk about Chicago like 90% of the time you talk about gun crime. I mean, like, come on, dude. No, not, 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 no, I'm not, I'm not mentioning Chicago right now. What I'm saying is if we dig into concealed carry states, and this was one of my arguments that you expressed contention with as well. If we look at the six states that have some of the most lax gun laws in the country, they have some of the highest, hom the lowest homicide rates in the country. Yeah, but New that, Hampshire, but Maine, saying uh, that doesn't, d saying that has no bearing on my point. That has nothing to do with what I'm saying, right? Of, of course it does. You, you went through the video where I explained that the homicide rate was left pretty much unchanged since the constitutional carry laws were enacted. In a lot of these states. Well, okay, I would I would have to see those numbers, I guess, and then compare them. You to did. What... You went through it. Well, no, no, you showed here. me like states that were really white and said they had low crime. That that Wait, had no. What? what? What does that have to do with anything? The chart that you showed me was like six states and their percentage white, and then their percentage. Oh, the of reason, white gun yeah, crime. the reason why I had that, the reason why I had that percentage there was because I did a, a, another video recently where I explained the difference between some states that sure. have concealed carry and other states that have concealed carry and why you see a homicide rate different in like for instance mississippi or something like that sure and, but what i'm saying is Idaho. that increasing your right to carry laws according to this paper seems to increase the amount of violent crime not that states with certain laws have certain amounts of crime or states with lots of white people have certain like you can't just say like well these three states have high right to carry laws and their violent crime is lower than another state because the reality is, or, or what could happen is those states might have gotten more crime, and the more crime they have is still less than the other states, right? This is a non sequitur. Just pointing to some states with low crime doesn't mean that crime didn't increase once right to carry laws were expanded in those states. Once again, your, your argument is a causal link between having constitutional carry or more lax gun laws and more gun crime. And what I'm saying is that's not precisely... It, because if we look at some states and some cities that even have higher populations than other cities and more lax gun laws, we're we're not seeing that. I mean, yeah, but did those states have more strict gun laws and then they became more lax and then they had more violent crime? But that violent crime is still lower than another state because if so, Vermont it's still had concealed carry since 1908. I showed you Wyoming. Wyoming went from in 2011, I think they enacted their concealed carry laws and they went from one or they went from three point something to 2.6 and this is in your response video you went over it and then you just tried to say that oh it might have, may have been higher or lower before and we can't really but that's not my argument my argument is you're applying a causal link to more lax gun laws and more gun crime and i'm saying well it can't be if it can't be just more lax gun laws equals more gun crime if we're looking at states and cities that have lax gun laws, and very low crime, very low homicide rates. Okay, here, do you have a paint thing or like a number or like a word file, or do you want to put numbers in your head, and then I'll talk for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I could have a state, and the gun crime there is two, and then I could have another state, and the gun crime there is 10, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, in the state where it's two, I could increase the right to carry laws, and the gun crime might increase to three. Now, in the state with 10, they might have no carry laws, so it's none, right? Now, what you're saying is you're going, oh, well, look, this state has three and the other state has 10. Therefore, the three, the right to carry laws, obviously are good because they've got more expanded right to carry than the 10 and they've got less homicide. But that's not, that's my, not argument. my argument. That is exactly your argument. That no, is that's not, I, I did not say the right to carry causes less crime or causes less gun crime. I'll leave that that's up what to someone I'm else saying, like though. John Lett. Like that's, that's what I'm saying. That's my argument. My argument is that increasing no, the state's adoption of rights. You said that I said, you're straw manning me. You said that I said that concealed carry decreases crime. I'm not saying that. I'll leave that up to John Lott, who wrote the book. Um, what, did he, what was that book called? More Guns, Less Crime or something like that. I'll leave that up to him. I'm just trying to argue your point of applying a causal link between more lax gun laws equals more gun crime. I mean, for instance, if we look at Boise, Idaho, it has 100,000 more people than Little Rock, Arkansas does. And they have concealed carry in Boise, Idaho. In Arkansas, they also have concealed carry. And yet, in Boise, Idaho, the homicide rate is 0 0.9 per 100,000. Yeah, and in Little not, Rock, it's 27.7. I understand, but you're not responding to my point. What I'm, I'm not saying that it's higher or lower in some states with more or less gun whatever. What I'm saying is that if you take a state, whatever its crime rate is, if you increase their access to firearms, if you increase the right to carry laws, that the crime in that state will increase. 
Not, I'm not talking about comparing two states. I'm saying if you take one place and you increase right to carry laws, that it will become a more violent place. That's the argument. Talking about local. I know, but your argument can't be correct. If we look at some of these states, we look at when they enacted the concealed carry laws, and today, and we don't see much of a change in the homicide rate per 100,000. Sure. That's what I'm that, saying. If you could show me several states where that happened, then I yeah. Then... You went over it in your video. Okay, Wyoming. wait, I'm sorry. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, okay. Let's let's go ahead and look them up then. So give me the state. Give me the increased right to carry laws when it was enacted, and then we'll look at the violent crime in that state. So, so you want to use Wy Wyoming? Wyoming in 2011, I believe it was. It may have been, yeah, 2011, I believe they, they enacted their concealed carry law. Actually, let me see him. This is not what I'm looking. I might be able to bring it up. So yeah, so Wyoming, 2011. That's when they enacted their concealed carry law. If we look at Wyoming, uh, how? Oh wait, where is it here? 2015 2015 is was it 2014 let me see when did wyoming enact their concealed carry law i may have that date wrong let me just check yeah you went over this in your video yeah well what i was going over was just that your response was not a response to my to, to the study that i was citing that's a, and then I'm also I'm kind of curious on um, on violent crime being correlated with um, with gun ownership. This is something that I've seen like graphed out a couple times, and I have to go through it. But I thought that it was like pretty commonly understood that like higher gun ownership usually leads to more gun deaths. That that's something that's kind of like borne out in a lot of states. Are you talking about per capita? I don't know what study you're referring. I'm always to. talking per capita. I would never say anything. All, all I'm saying is that um, if we look at if we look at the states with the most lax gun laws. They're pretty safe and including boy. I mean, perfect example. You're talking about, you know, population and population density and, and, and things like that. Boise, Idaho versus Jackson, Mississippi. It has almost 100,000 more people than Jackson, Mississippi. And yet we see Boise, Idaho at 0 0.9 per 100,000 homicide rate versus Jackson, Mississippi, which is 20, 20, 34.5 per 100,000 or something like that. All I'm saying is your causal link, it can't be because of the access to firearms, that this is the reason why people are killing each other. That's all I'm saying. You're applying a causal link. Wait, wait, wait saying, okay, hold on, hold on, okay, because you said like causal link like 7,000 times. What does causal link mean to you? Okay, this is your exact quote. Wait, wait, don't, no, no, don't worry about, I don't care about exact quotes. What do you think, no, of, no, when it, I say causal it, link, what does that mean to you? You're saying that more uh, access, or, more lax gun laws, conceal carry, causes a higher homicide rate in whatever place in America. Mm -hmm. in vi or violent crime in general, yeah. Right. What I'm saying is it can't be because of the access to firearms. It's probably more likely because of gang membership and things like that. When so we the gangs increased causes... when right to carry laws were expanded in these states? Well, I mean, gangs have increased since 2004. We do know that. Suddenly, okay. Um, I mean, I guess if you want, hold on. Um, I mean, this is a forty-three page paper. I mean, we could go over this <laughs> if you want to dig through like the paragraphs and shit. Um, oh, I, did we ever did we ever figure out anything about Wyoming? Oh, I didn't. I forgot about that. Um, when did Wyoming enact or? I mean, I, I mean, I can just start. Like, I don't know. You gave a response to it in your response video. I, I don't know. Oh, listen. yeah, here it is. It, it, it wasn't. I have it highlighted here. It was in 2011 when Wyoming enacted their concealed carry law. So in 2011, Wyoming enacted their concealed carry law. So their homicide rate was 3.2. This is uh, from 3.2 per 100,000. Today, it's 2.6 per 100,000. Okay. And I'm looking at it right second. here. 2011, as of July 2011, anyone who meets the same requirements to obtain a Wyoming concealed carry permit can. So they have concealed carry in Wyoming. They enacted it in 2011. I'm looking at it right now on my, on my yeah, screen. Yeah, gotcha. I see it as well. And it looks like their violent crime right now is higher than it has been in the past 20 years. Once again, you're talking, you're saying homicides. 
You're no, saying no, I'm saying violent crime example, right now. Is... Wyoming violent crime right now seems to be higher than it has been in this chart in the past 20 years. I'm probably farther than that. This only goes back. I don't know if these stats are 100% correct, but so I'm linking you this right here for cityrating.com, crime statistics, Wyoming. So Wyoming violent crime, it looks like in, I think that's 2016, looks like it's higher than it has been in the entire listing of this chart. Um, but again, your main driver, your your main driver is you well, said- Well, my main driver was saying that, wait, wait, when did you say the right to, when, yeah, when did you say the right to carry laws went into effect? 2011. Okay, so it doesn't look like this helped anybody. If anything, it looks like there was a huge spike in like 2014, 2015. Let me look at that. What do you have here? Let me look in the... Hold on. Uh, so 2014, 2015, and what is it at now? Is it back down to original levels or something? I can't uh, actually... I see 1,400. This is using absolute figures, but... Okay, so it's not per capita because the population has changed, obviously. Either way, the homicide rate is lower than when they enacted the concealed carry law in Wyoming. And a, a few other states as well. And then some states, it did go up. But what I'm well, saying is... Well, hold on. Is, That's not true. There's, I don't think so. So it if, it, if it went into effect in 2011, this is saying that there were about 1,200. July of 2011. Yeah, so this is at 1,200 then. And then in 2016, it went up to 1,400. Did the population of Wyoming grow 15% in four years? I'm not sure, but I'm looking at the homicide rate. Um, okay, can you, um, can, okay, can you shoot me those numbers, what you're looking at? Can, you can link them in the Hangout. Right. <laughs> the problem is I got the Hangout on the screen here. Um, let me see here. Okay. There, there you go. So look at 2011. Why isn't why are these charts in? Um, oh, this is per 100,000. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so okay, so in 2011, this is from America's Health Ranking. Here you go, I'm, and then I'll click your link and check. Because everybody seems to rate this shit differently. So it looks like according to this, in 2011, they had 404 per 100,000 incidences of murder, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault in 2011. 404 per 100,000? Number, that's, this includes murder, rape, robbery, and oh, aggravated assault. Oh, got it, so it's all violent crime. Sure. So this is 404 in 2011, and then in 2018, it's 394. So... It went down by 10. What? So it went down a little bit then, is what you're saying. Um. It. Yeah, it seems to have. Right, so that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that because the concealed carry laws, it decreased violent crime and decreased homicide. I, I'll leave that up to John Lott, like I said. But I'm just saying that the that saying that it uh, more easier access to guns or wait, 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 wait. Oh shit! Hold on, I might have fucked up really hard. I'm sorry. One second. No, wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> actually, that was America as uh, on on the whole decreased. Wyoming actually increased. Quite substantially, actually. What so in it? 2011, it was 196, and in 2018, it was 238. So that's like a 20% increase in the amount of rape, murdery, Let me grab the link murder, murder, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault. Yeah. Where's um, the, where's the was it the first link that you sent? No, me? it's the one that I just sent right now. Oh, okay. So this is all violent crime. To be fair, 2011, because I'll be generous here, I'll say 2011 looks like an outlier year in terms of low crime but even if i back up to 2010 the year before that was 228 and in 2018 it was 238 so it looked like it went from uh what it looks like it went from 2011 from 196 to 238 is this the graph that you're talking about yeah this is what i'm looking for right i mean in 2004 it was at 230 <laughs> so it's like that once again we're not we're not talking apples to apples here well, so in 2004, before they had concealed carry, it was at 274, and it looks like it fell a ton. But then as soon as they put in the concealed carry, every single year after that had more instances of violence, which seems to support the conclusion that my paper... 1994 was at 320, no concealed carry, 758 for... Was it 758 for... What is this? I don't even know. That's the that United is. States compared to Wyoming. Oh, United States, okay. 320 in 94. So all I'm saying is, listen, the homicide rate fell from 3.2 to 2.6. Sure. Can you give me the, your, can you give me the graph argument, for the homicide rate? I did. I sent it to you. Okay. Your argument, uh, your argument is 
more lax gun laws equals more gun crime. Mm -hmm. And my what I'm saying is, if that oh, no, 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 I don't think it's more lax gun laws is more gun crime. I think it was more lax gun laws leads to an increase in all violent crime. Okay, so I mean, we can look at we can look at many different states and cities here. We can look at, for instance, Boise, Idaho versus. Well, no, no, Jackson, no. So I would never like look at like an. We can look at Boise, Idaho versus Little Rock, Arkansas. Boise, Idaho versus Lansing, Michigan. We could look at Boise, Idaho versus San Bernardino, California. Boise, Idaho has more people, almost a hundred thousand more people than, for instance, Jackson, Mississippi. And yet, yeah, no, no. So I would never do a comparison there. like this. It sounds like a really. I don't know why I would compare cities like this. What I would do is, or what I imagine in this paper, what they do is they probably take a broad number of cities, or maybe they take the entire U.S. crime rate, and then they compare it to places, either cities or states, where la where these gun laws have been made more lax. Not comparing one city to another. There's no reason to do that. That doesn't do anything. And it also looks like this Wyoming is is pretty much following the trend of all of America as well. So. Well, you know, you saying that more lax gun laws equals more gun crime or access to concealed carry equals more gun <laughs> crime or more violent crime. It just once again, it just it's not a good argument. Well, so in 2011, compared to 2018, the amount of overall crime fell in the U.S. But in Wyoming, where you said that they had increased right to carry laws, it increased, which seems to directly support the argument 100 percent that I was just making. But their homicide rate decreased. What okay. I'm saying is there's a lot more involved than just more lax gun sure. laws. So can you, real quick, can, can I, um, you, you link me this nationality and state thing. Where is the Wyoming um, homicide rate? Where can I find that in here? It's all the way at the bottom. Okay, so Wyoming, states marked in yellow. Oh, so nationwide murder rates. Is a U.S. average listed on here or no? Um, and also, when did, their, when did their gun thing go into effect? 2011. When, when in 2011? July. Okay, so in 2010, it was 1.4, which was the right. year before. And in the six years that follow, mm -hmm. it is substantially higher, over twice as much right. in every single other year. How do you think right. this supports your argument? It totally supports my argument because your argument is more lax gun laws equals more gun crime or conceal carry equals more gun crime. And this is the reason why I bring wait, up wait, wait, wait. many different examples like wait, Boise, Idaho. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Wait, let's stop. I know that you, you try to pivot to like the cities that you've like memorized because they have less black people or whatever. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm only looking at the data that you're giving me. So in this, I'm looking at your deathpenaltyinfo.org. Okay, I'm looking at this thing. I'm not talking about Boise, Idaho or places with lots of black people. Okay, on this graph right here, on this whoa, chart, whoa, 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 whoa. what? What? what Why did you have to go to race, Destiny? Because that's where you want to take it, right? So I we'll, we'll get we'll get there later. I, well, you don't have to. It's called dog whistling. Don't worry, I'm not an idiot. Okay. So <laughs> let's look at 2011. I'm not strong So let's look at 2011. So I'm looking at 2011. Okay, in in Wyoming, your homicide rate. This is the year that you it, it, did your concealed carry is 3.2. The next right. year, it's what? 2.4. 2.9, 2.7, 2. This is all higher than the three years preceding where you had no concealed carry. They enacted concealed carry in 2011. Okay. Their homicide rate was 3.2. Today it's 2.6. Okay, that was for one year though. You understand why it's you can't do years, this? Six what? years. No, 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 no. But your rate was 3.2 for one year. Before that, it was 1.4. Two yeah, point it goes up oh, and down. One it's, point. It's, it's, it hovers around the same numbers. It goes from two point four, two point nine, two points back down to two point seven, two point seven again, up to three point four, down to two point six. Sure. Right back where we started. So, sure. so what, what would be good is, is so what would be good is we could graph maybe the United States violent or our gun homicide rate, okay, versus Wyoming's and see how if we feel like we had a bigger effect here. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but what you're showing me right here is very unconvincing. If I told you that the the murder rate in the city was 1.9, 2.0, 1.4, then we get concealed carry, and then it goes up to 3.2, and it's up to 2.4, 2.92. It's still all higher than the three years preceding where we didn't have concealed carry. And then there's another one, which is just... Well, wait, wait, no, 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 not another one. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just right. pointing out that this Wyoming data totally contradicts what you're telling me. It's the exact in, opposite in story. In July, they enacted their, their concealed carry law mm -hmm. in 2000, July of 2011. Okay. 
like I said, they went from 3.2 to 2.4 the and next they, but year. But wait, wait, you keep saying they went from 3.2. No, 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 you're, you're the one who's applying a causal link to no, conceal why do you carry keep saying and that? No, no, wait, homicide. stop, stop I'm saying. I'm the one who's doing that. Please stop saying I'm applying a causal link, okay? You are. You're saying you said that increased access to firearms, conceal carry, more lax gun laws equals more gun crime. If your argument was correct, then you would see a place like Boise, Idaho. Stop going back to Boise. Country. Stop saying one city. I don't it's know why a, you keep bringing up one city. The reason why I bring it up is because it's a perfect example. No, no, because it's it perfect because it suits your narrative. And a lot of cities throughout America that have a much higher homicide rate. Okay. If your argument Let's... was correct, the states with concealed carry no, 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 would no, no. be okay, the okay. Most, some of the most no, dangerous No, no, that's not true. We've in already America. established that this is an unsecured. Okay, I want you to imagine I have a city. Not. Let's say I have a beautiful city. The violent crime is 1.9 that year. Then the next year, it's 2.0. And then the next year, it's 1.4. And then the year after, I'm like, let's do concealed carry. And we do it. Now it's up to 3.2. Next year, it goes down to 2.4, but it's still way higher than it was before. Then it goes up to 2.9. Then it goes down to 2.7, but still way higher than before concealed carry. How is this an argument saying concealed carry didn't increase the violent crime? There are many states that I've been through. Wait, why are we saying many states? You responded to that. What? Sorry? Wait, why are we saying many states? Let's just focus on the one example given right here. Or if you want to admit that Wyoming is a bad example, we can move to another state maybe. No, I mean, Wyoming is a perfect example. So is New Hampshire. So is Idaho. So is Vermont. So are all these other states that have cities that are much larger than other states in, in America. And yet their homicide rate and their crime rate and their violent crime rate is very, very low. Okay, how do I, can somebody help me make a graph? How do I make a graph? There's got to be an easy way to like Wolfram Alpha this data here into a graph. I'm really can, curious. Can you just answer me the question that I asked you earlier? How, what was the question? The question was that if we look at, uh, for instance, t give me an answer, straight up answer, and I want you to be honest. Why is Rockford, Illinois, which has less of a population, more dangerous than Boise, Idaho? I'm sure there are a multitude of factors. I don't look at single cities like this. It seems like really weird to cherry pick them. No, it's not. It's not really weird. This, I'm asking you. Why is I, it? I don't know. I would have to study what's going on in both of those cities. Okay. So there's there's many different examples that I've given you, and I've asked you. Well, every example that you've correct. given me so far, when we've actually gone and looked at the data, you failed to substantiate your point. Like, it seems like the data, even in the cherry you pick have, examples, is not helping you. you like, this Wyoming example is just... your point on multiple occasions. Well, that's why you keep pivoting away. I'm that's why you keep... your point of... No, no, you're not arguing anything. You keep pivoting away every time I try to hold you to your crime. own data. Like, even when I'm pointing at your own numbers don't agree with you, you keep pivoting to Boise, Idaho for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, so if you're looking at the homicide rate in, in Wyoming, if we just stick stick on Wyoming for a minute yeah. here, um, what were those homicides caused with? What, what were they caused with? Do you I, have I don't, data? No, I'm just looking at what you linked. I don't think you know either. I'm just going by what you linked me. I don't know. Well, I mean, shouldn't you, if you're making this argument to me, using Wyoming as an example? No, I don't. I don't know what people, how people killed each other in in Idaho or Wyoming or some of these other states. What I'm saying is, your argument of this is your argument. So let's let's not move around here like you're trying to do. Your argument is that more lax gun laws equals higher crime rates. What I'm rebutting with is that if that were true then some of the states with constitutional carry and the most lax gun laws in the country would have higher crime rates and higher homicide rates than some of the states with stricter gun okay. laws. What you just said is a non sequitur. It means that your it point is. does not logically follow. Just because increasing right to carry laws makes it so you have a more violent state doesn't necessarily mean that states with more open carry laws are going to be more violent than states with less right to carry laws. These two things are not congruent with one another. This doesn't logically follow. Your argument is irrational. Even if it's true, even if all your premises not. were... It's, it's of course just... it's not. How is it irrational when you're saying that... Listen, more lax gun laws equals more gun crime. But yet when I point out to you states that have the most lax gun laws in the country, they're not as dangerous as states with stricter gun laws. How is that a non sequitur or whatever you want to keep using? Be because it's that what you just said has nothing to do with what I just said. They're not related at all. Of course it does. Yes, it does. No, they're not. Like, okay, so like remember my earlier example when I said if we go from two to three, 
And then we have a state with 10 that even though the two to three is still smaller than the 10, the three is way bigger than the two. Do you remember that example? If we yeah, have a, if we've got a, you said that the homicide rate fell in Australia because of the gun buyback program. I remember that. That was just a, like 30 well, the homicide ago. rate did fall in Australia. It did fall, but not because of the gun buyback. Program. Well, we don't know that. You can't establish that. <laughs> then why did you say that? My, well, I, I said just, that it's, it's I said that saying. experts, I said that, about. so I said that experts seem to point to the gun buyback as having a positive impact. It's not the sole reason why violent crime felt, but it seems like a lot of, and there are some on the other side that say it didn't have that large of an impact, but it seems like there are a lot of experts that do a lot of studying that say that it did have an impact. Um, regardless of Australia, I don't know why I went back there. Okay. I'm trying to make this very simple. Okay. You did. You started that. Well, Okay. So if you have a state that has two homicides per 100,000 and then you increase the um, you increase the gun laws there, or, or I'm sorry, you increase the right to carry laws there and you go from two to three, so now you've got more right to carry, and then you compare that to a state that's at 10, that has less, you can't say that just because the state with more right to carry has less violent crime than the state with higher gun control means that more right to carry is good because the state with more right to carry substantially increased the amount of gun crime. It's still just lower than the other state. But these two things are not related to one another. Okay, so if there's, as I've showed you, I mean, you, you, you responded to this yourself. When we look at your, this is what you're saying. This is what you're trying to, to sell people. That the more lax your gun laws are, are in your state, I don't understand how you don't understand this. You're trying to sell the people that the more lax our gun laws are, if we have concealed carry or constitutional carry or whatever the case may be, then it's going to be more dangerous the more lax your gun laws are. What I'm saying is it can't be if there are states with the most lax gun laws in the country, which are safer than states that have the most strict gun laws in the country. That's all okay, I'm here's saying. What I I'm trying, here, no, no, I, I, I know, I know. Okay, so do you agree that people that have like Charles Schwab, like investment accounts, okay, these people probably are more wealthy than people that don't. Would you agree with that? People that have Charles people that have people that have like Vanguard or Charles Schwab accounts or some shit, right? These people are probably more wealthy than people that don't have those, correct? I guess. Okay. I don't know. Now, that is a statement right there that can be true. Okay. If you have an investment can account, be. sure. We'll we'll, it, we'll say for the sake of this argument, it is. It's probably true. If you have an investment account, you are more wealthy than somebody that does not have an investment account. Okay. Now, just because these two things are true. That doesn't mean that a person without an investment account can just get one and become more wealthy, right? What it means is that, or what it could mean is that people that are already wealthy tend to open an investment account. And that's why they get, that's why they appear to be more wealthy than people that don't, right? But if somebody were to say, can I open a Charles Schwab investment account and become more wealthy? No. Just because people with a Charles Schwab investment account have more wealth than the other people doesn't mean you can just open one and become more wealthy. Much the same way that if you have a state with a, with right to carry laws that has a low violent crime rate, that doesn't mean that you can just expand your right to carry laws and get a low violent crime rate because those two I know that. That's, that's, not, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that it's... It's not because they've expanded their right to carry laws that possibly that their their crime rate is 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 higher. It's not because they have easy access to firearms that their crime rate or their murder rate is higher. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's okay, why. But then you gave me as an example why Wyoming. You keep getting away. Well, I, I, I don't because you, you get getting away from this. Sure, because you gave me an example there of are, Wyoming where it looks like they increased their right to carry shit and their violent crime like seems like it increased or their their homicide their murder rates increased. No, their homicide rate went from three point something to two point six. No, 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 it went from one point four. Through that three point something, that's the year when that went into effect, where their right to carry laws opened it went up. In, it went into effect in July of two thousand eleven. So you would you would you would assume that this would just keep ticking up, but it's not. Well, it's not. But it is compared to the years prior: 2.4, 2.9, 2.7, 2.7. These what, are all higher than many than most of the years it, prior. Why is it not five right now? That's what I'm saying. If if this if this argument maybe were correct, it would have been one. Look, let's and go it, back to okay. Look at the graph I linked you. Let's go back to two thousand seven. It was three point one, then one point nine, then two, then one point four. Maybe it would have dropped to right, one point so two. Two thousand seven. It was the exact same as two thousand eleven. This is what I'm saying. I'm saying you no. can't 
say without a shadow of a doubt that con- that easier access to firearms is the reason why there's homicide or the no or it's I, going of course to i can't homicide. say that without a shadow of a doubt that's why i'm relying on my broad study rather than your cherry picking of single states or cities it's not it's not cherry picking you are you pick you one... are saying that this causes this I'm saying, well, hold on a minute. If that is true, then why, when we look okay. at these states or these cities, does it not? So if we go That's to Google Scholar saying. right now, what we could do is we could type in. Um, uh, and then you went off on some Charles Schwab tirade or something like so, that. So if we go into Google, into Google Scholar, we should be able to type like increased gun access impact on crime. And we should be able to find um, like broad analyses that seem to state whether or not it increases or decreases crime, right? Rather than just trying to look at like one or two years. But once again, they're, a, but, but this is what I'm saying. Where is the sample size from? Is the sample size from the sample size on this is going to be wait, or something like that? For, for, what, the what sam- ask, you, the, the FBI data is available get, on this. We don't need to sample size a city. We would go for the entire state. It's not something where you have to like get like study like participants or whatever. Right. What I'm trying to say is just because they enacted their concealed carry law, just because it's they give easier access to firearms or you can purchase a firearm easier or they told us now in California that we can purchase high capacity magazines just because those things happened doesn't mean that the crime increases or decreases or homicide increases or decreases. Sure. I'm saying it, it's not, not the gun. Yeah, not it's not the gun. You cannot say that. That 100%. No, you're never, you're never going to say sociologically, you're never going to say 100% anything. You I don't know are. why you keep saying, no, I'm not. I've told you a million yes, times. I'm, not. I'm saying that it seems to have an impact. I'm sure there are many other impacts. So if I just type this into Google Scholar, increased gun access impact on crime, I just type that. These are the types of articles I'm getting. Gun control and suicide, the impact of state firearm regulations in the United States. Spoiler alert, if you read the conclusion, restricting access to lethal means has been identified as an effective approach to suicide prevention. If I keep reading more of these um, article titles, right? Yeah, well, more, I want to get to suicide. I definitely want to get to suicide. Sure, okay. Better gun enforcement, less crime. On, on, more on guns, more crime. Um, repeal of the concealed carry weapons law and its impact on gun-related injuries and deaths. This is an article that we could read. We could go through all of these, and maybe some of these might even support you. But like, just pointing out like one or two states or one or two Boise, Idaho's, and trying to compare it to one or two other cities is not an effective way of doing this. It's it's not one or two. What I'm saying is, I don't understand why you don't understand this. I, no, be, because I have an understanding. Here is an article that I just googled: repeal of the concealed weapons law and its impact on gun-related injuries and deaths, both nationally and statewide. Firearm purchases increased after the passage of SB 1108. Although the proportion of IGRIDs to overall violent crime remained the same, the proportion of gun-related homicides increased. Liberalization of gun access is associated with an increase in fatalities from guns. Every single broad study that I've ever researched agrees with my. Point. Point. I didn't even have to like spend a lot of time researching this because I couldn't find anything that supports your side. All you can ever do is like cite me like these single cities or whatever to back your argument up, but you can't show me any papers, any published literature that actually You're agrees with your point. That you you are saying that it is because of access to firearms. No, I'm not. I'm citing researchers that are saying it. I'm saying researchers right. are citing these reasons. Right, and I'm saying then if this if this argument were true or it leads to high crime, or it leads to a dangerous place, or, or whatever the case may be. If this argument were true, and my question, and you just keep saying, oh, why, why do you keep bringing up Boise, Idaho? It's because it's an important point. Okay, if I disagree. I don't think anybody legitimately arguing this would say, well, I don't care about your broad studies that cover the entire U.S. I want to talk about one or two cities. You understand that that's like by definition a bad argument, right? The cherry Not one picking- or two cities. Jackson, Mississippi, Little Rock, Arkansas, Lansing, Michigan, San Bernardino, California, Rockford, Illinois, Santa Ana, wow, California. Wow, okay, seven to- I can bring up several cities, several cities that I've been through. You can bring I've up been- several cities. There are over 3,000 county or counties in the united states how okay, many cities are again, there you, you just keep you just keep pivoting i'm not pivoting stick with I your want... argument stick with your argument yeah. your argument okay, is, yeah, here, wait, wait, okay wait, 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 i won't pivot i won't pivot here's my argument my argument is i'm appealing to broad analyses of the united states to figure out if gun crime increases when right to carry laws are expanded what is your argument you know several cities right to carry laws and also lacks gun ownership lacks gun laws yes my i say that they increase okay. violent crime they seem to increase the amount of violent crime and you also said that those places tend to be more dangerous and have higher violent crime and higher homicide rates. This is what you said. 
did, wait, did you not, not hear anything I just said? Or? No, no, I'm talking about the previous debate, and I'm talking about in the Joe Biggs debate wait, as wait, well. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. Why are we going back like 12 debates ago? Because I'm using your quotes. I'm using what Why you said. Why would we care I'm about my quotes? Let's argued. just find out what's correct. Who cares about like a quote from a debate seven debates ago in a totally different question? That pivot was insane. Like, I just want to know. Here's my question. I'm just a random person in the U.S. What I want to know is, is if we increase the access to firearms in the U.S., does it increase or decrease violent crime? And every broad study that I've ever found, and I'm guessing it's the same for you too, and that's why you're not giving me any, every broad study I've ever found seems to show that when you increase access to firearms, when you make them easy to purchase, easy to carry, violent crime tends to increase as well. That seems to be a bad thing, in my opinion. And every broad study I've seen points to that. No, no, that what I'm saying is, Who's causing the gun crime, though? Who I don't is know. Well, who do the studies crime? say? Who cares? We do know. We do know who's causing the gun crime. It's mostly by gang. By what does gang that have to do with my argument? If you increase the amount weapons. of... Sure, that's fine. If you increase okay. the access to firearms for those gangs, then, guess, then they kill more I, people. That's bad, too. They're not, they're not purchasing their guns legally at gun stores. No, but they that's get a lot point. of them from legal pe from people that have purchased them legally. That's that's called a straw purchase. That's been ruled by the Supreme Court illegal. It doesn't matter if the person initially buyed the gun legally and sold it illegally. I, that's still I the think, gun coming from a legal source. It doesn't matter I if think the. We started at, a, at, the, at the, my okay. Let me ask you this: Do you think it's more important to control gun ownership or more important to protect gun rights? I think we should have probably started off with that. Um, I don't intrinsically care about gun rights, so I would say um, I, my goal is to reduce the amount of harm caused in the United States by firearms, and then if that harm like is exceeding, like, I just I guess, buy firearms though. Well, buy anything, but because right now we're talking about gun control, <laughs> but I mean, okay, but answer the question. Do you think it's more important? It's very simple. I think it's more important to protect gun rights. Wait, you if you think that, then why are we having this debate? All you have to say to me is, I don't care if violent crime is increasing. I think that no, gun rights in the United States are worth that increase in crime. That's a fine argument. You can even defend that from a philosophical level. Fucking 30,000 people die a year to guns and like 60,000 to cars. If you want to make that argument, you can do that. But why waste all this time talking about like homicide most, statistics most and everything? Most of those deaths are, are suicides. And now you're, now you're moving on, by the way. But Well, well I'm, I'm not moving on. What do you mean? their suicide is, does that mean they don't count Re decreasing a person's right to access a firearm also decreases the chance of they to kill themselves with a firearm i mean that supports my argument as well no it, it doesn't we're gonna we're gonna get on to that but what i'm asking you do you think it's more important to protect gun rights or to control gun ownership in this country and there's only I don't two know what you mean by control gun ownership or protect gun rights do you think it's more important right now do you think it's more important? Your drive is to decrease homicides in this country. Sure, to decrease you, the amount of harm. That's my goal. So whichever one of those things. Of harm. Yeah, sure. Right. So do you think that it's more important that we should put controlling gun ownership higher than protecting gun rights? It depends on which one decreases the amount of harm. Well, I mean, if you're, I mean, what you're arguing is more control for gun ownership. Yeah, because that saying. seems to decrease the amount of harm. Yeah, so that's what I'm arguing in favor but of. But it doesn't. But it doesn't because most of the gun crime, most of the crime guns that are picked up are illegally possessed. But that, but they came from legal sources first. What? Most of the gun crime is caused by gang members with illegally possessed weapons. That means they're yeah. not following the laws. But that they you got them connect. from. But they got them from you people that were following the laws. laws. That's the point. They got them from people that were following the laws. Uh, no, they weren't. If they were buying a gun for a person that has a felony or for a person in general that's a straw person, that's not following the law. No, no. Their initial purchase of the firearm was legally done. And then past that, they did some illegal shit with it. Right. That's breaking the law. So why would you want to enact more laws? You're, Why you're would you hurting. have laws at all if that's your, if the, unironically, if that's your argument that everybody that's going to break a law is going to break a law? Why would we have any laws whatsoever? So an intelligent person would say, well, obviously there are some people that are going to break laws regardless, but making something illegal puts up either one, another barricade to dissuade somebody or discourage somebody from doing it, or two, gives you another point to catch somebody doing something illegally before they've actually killed somebody. I don't understand what you're unironically saying, don't make laws for lawbreakers. Why would we have any laws in the U.S. at all if that's going to be your argument? We should just have no laws because because good people will be good and bad people will be bad. That argument is told, totally like bankrupt. Wait, that's exactly what, what you just said. No. You just okay. Hold on, no, 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 no. Hold on. So if somebody you're, you're buys, if somebody, no, no, I'm not strong manning. Hold on. Totally if somebody buys, if yes, somebody buys a firearm legally no, and then sells it to somebody else illegally. No, you no, no, no. Can, please let me, please let me finish one point because you talk, right, you pivoted right. so much. Okay. So you're saying that if a person sells a firearm to somebody via a straw purchase illegally, that that's breaking the law. 
And I'm saying that if they buy the firearm legally first, they're getting the firearm, they're acquiring it legally, we could put a roadblock up there or make that process illegal. So maybe they'll get caught there or be discouraged from doing it there rather than handing the gun off to somebody in an illegal fashion that's going to commit a crime with it. And your answer to that is to enact more gun laws, which is only going to hinder the people who are legally following the law, who are legally purchasing, purchasing no, their weapons. It will hinder. No, it can hinder somebody who wants to illegally sell a firearm because it will make it more difficult for them to legally purchase the firearm first. What? No, of course it wouldn't. It would hinder people who want to purchase their weapons legally. No, You're it, saying it you will want hinder to both. Make it harder for people to obtain firearms in this country that's what you're saying yes because a lot of those are sold to people that do illegal things with it if you buy a firearm from somebody who obtained it legally if you make it harder for that person who obtained it legally to obtain it then they might not be able to sell it to somebody illegally okay so we're gonna go we're gonna go to the we're gonna go to the gang we're gonna go to we the can gun go to the gang here. thing i know you like chicago so much i think for chicago it was something like 60 percent of the guns used there had been obtained from like indiana first Okay, so we're looking at, uh, which is illegal, by the way, transferring a gun from Indiana to the city of Chicago. That process is illegal. is illegal, but they were acquired legally in Indiana. If you made the legal acquisition process in Indiana more difficult, then the illegal process of selling them to somebody would be more difficult as well. So you would cut down on some percentage of illegal guns that are brought into Chicago because you've made them harder to acquire legally in Indiana. Here we are. If we talk serious about reducing crime, shouldn't we consider our underlying factors? One of those underlying causes is gang activity, which accounts for an average of 48 percent of violent crime in most jurisdictions and up to 90 percent in some jurisdictions. Typically firearms from gang members. This is from the FBI. Firearms are acquired through illegal purchases, straw purchases via surrogates or middlemen and thefts from individuals, vehicles residences and commercial establishments this is from 2011 fbi report gangs are responsible for an average of 48 percent of violent crime in most jurisdictions and up to 90 percent in several others so if the gang members this is a trafficking issue only three percent of guns are purchased legally at gun stores of crime guns the chicago police department has to, has already cited that the 90 percent of the guns that's the not city of that's chicago. not the first point that's not the first point of purchase the three percent number I think it was something like 50% are purchased, and then a lot of those are sold illegally thereafter. No, I'm looking at, let me go to this. Uh, I have, actually, I'm going to use one of uh, these PolitiFact sources here. Is gun crime committed by those who illegally possess guns? So this is from PolitiFact, mostly true. They rate it in 13 states with the fewest restrictions on gun ownership, 40% of Inmates illegally obtained the gun they use. Webster said only about 13% purchased the gun from a store or a pawn shop. So we're looking we're looking at uh, somewhere around 80 percent, 90 percent in 37 other states, including New York State. Sixty percent of inmates illegally procured the gun that they use. Webster said. If you look at the most stringent standards for legal gun ownership, it's more like 65 percent. This is from Webster. Local data. We have local data. Regional studies have found that higher share of criminals did not legally possess a gun when they committed their crimes. Research. Okay, here, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Think, no, 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 you think these gang members are just no, no, going no, to on, Indiana, walking into a gun store, and just like. Yeah, sorry. So I'm, I'm actually, I did research on this because I'm familiar with your your, uh, your primary source here. So I went ahead and I linked this to you, okay? So the amount of guns that are purchased like off the street or like in like the black market or whatever, that number is 43.2%, not okay. 90%. So that's page seven here. Now, obtained from an individual, like just bought from somebody or given as a gift, that number is 25%. And then purchased at a retail source is 10%. So is theoretically- that Is that legal? Is that legal? Initially, yes. The people that initially bought the gun is legal, yes. And and then, and then it the sold illegally by selling it to someone else, which is against the law. Now, so, federally, do you not really way, wait? Wait. Do you not really see how keeping it, making it more I difficult for somebody want, to purchase I, it? The vast majority. We're talking the vast majority of gun owners who legally possess their weapons are not violent criminals they're not this going is a non sequitur this has nothing to do with what we're talking about right now why would you hinder my right to be able to obtain a firearm easily not only that but you guys are going after the ar-15 by the way which is ridiculous because a, some people have sold their weapons illegally as a straw purchase to because someone. we're trying to reduce the overall amount of harm in the united states that's why anyway. you would do it yeah about 
only about three percent of inmates who used a gun bought it in a gun store, and and we go on. Why to are we talking about a gun store? So first of all, hold on. I'm going by the bureau. Of, hold on. Wait, wait. So I'm going by the bureau of justice statistics. So I'm going by the bureau of justice statistics. Okay, this is the source and method to obtain a firearm purchased or traded at a retail source is 10.1 percent, and then obtained from an individual is 25.3 percent. So that's purchased or traded from a family or friend, or rented, borrowed from a family or friend, or gift or purchased for a prisoner. <clears throat> say say that last part again, the 25%, what'd you say? So 25.3% of people um, among state and federal prisoners who had possessed a firearm during the offense for which they were serving time, sources and methods used to obtain a firearm. So obtained from an individual, another person, is 25.3%. That... What, what about the rest of the 75%? Why are 10.1% we... are purchased or traded at a retail source. Okay. Um, 43 point, and then 43.2% are off the street or slash underground market. So either via I'm theft. We had a study from the University of Chicago, which looked at 99 inmates at the Cook County Jail in Chicago in 2015. It found that only 3% of inmates who used a gun bought it at a gun store. Are you talking about, what are we talking okay, about? Earlier here? in this conversation, you were throwing at me sample size a million times over. I'm pretty sure if I would ask you something about like, say the central, uh, the central limit theorem or whatever, about like how many numbers you need to make a good study or whatever, I'm pretty sure you won't know, but that's okay. But earlier you were, gr you were grilling the fuck out of me about a sample size. I'm giving you a Bureau of Justice Statistics report that has 256,000 prisoners, and you're countering this with a survey of inmates with a sample size as 99 from a single prison? No. I, what I'm saying is if it's only 25% of people who purchase their weapon from a person, you're saying it's only 25%, and only 10% who purchase their weapon at a gun store. Okay. So where's the where's the rest of the 65%? They're, they, were per, they were purchased illegally? Is that what you're saying? So... Off the street slash underground market is 43.2%. Right. 43.2, okay. Okay. 6.4 so from theft, so stolen from people that purchase guns, maybe legally. Okay. 43 plus yeah. 6, okay. Well, here, you can just go to page 7. Here, I linked this. Just go to page 7. You I know. I, if I don't want to... Uh, let me go. Let me... Let me see if this gives away the... Because I have the Hangouts on the screen here, so hold on a second. I just have to make sure I don't give away the link. Yeah, if a criminal breaks into my car and steals it, does that count as an illegal gun or a legal gun? That's an illegal gun. But it's if it would have been harder for me to purchase that gun, then maybe they wouldn't have broken into my car and stolen it. Do you see the connection there? If it, so you're saying you wanted to make it harder for you to purchase a weapon? That if you make it harder to acquire a firearm, yeah, it also makes it harder to steal them or get them illegally from other people. Once again, you want to hinder law-abiding citizens from being able to obtain a weapon. Every single law hinders law-abiding citizens from doing things. Yes, I'm hindered no, from how fast. No, you want to further hinder law-abiding. Yep. Just like we hinder people from, from driving a certain people speed. People steal weapons, or people, yep. yeah, uh, or people. I, yes, purchase this isn't an argument. Yeah, traffic them in the black market. That's correct. Yeah, just like we tell people not to text and drive, that's hindering their freedom to operate their motor vehicle. Just like we tell people not to You're drink in public. You're talking about a right. You're talking about a constitutional right mm -hmm. and and a privilege like driving. Those two, when you talk about non sequiturs, oh, sure. Hold on. Well, those two are total non sequiturs. Well, no, I'm giving an example of how we hinder people's freedoms in order to keep people safe in the United States. No, but they, they we're talking about a constitutional right. If that's your argument, then why are you bullshitting about with homicide numbers? If you just want to say it's in the Constitution, I'm, I'm not going to disagree you with you. The gang members with illegally obtained, with not wait, wait, obtained. Now we're not talking about the Constitution weapon. anymore. If you want to talk about the Constitution, then we can talk about it. The repeal why in the, the world wouldn't you go after the gang members? This, this is what this is what people like Destiny try to do in in, in Cook County. They erased the gangs database. They they erased the gangs database where most of the gangs causing most of the crime in places like Chicago, all over the country, not just in Chicago. What about this in uh, Jacksonville like in that place too? Yeah, this is what people like Destiny want to do. You want to erase the gangs database because it contains too many people of color on it. This is <laughs> why. This who's is like, what, well, what, did, what do we go to this? this? Is, I want this to erase the gangs do. database because it has too do. many people of color. This Ironically, is what saying. actually, you're saying it's racist. It's the same thing. Yeah, this is this is what you want. Okay, to do. here I'm actually curious. How do you feel about a no gun list? Do you think we should have that? Uh, you're talking about the FBI. You mentioned that you said the FBI should be able to no gun list people. Yeah. Do you think here. we should be able to no gun list people on the on the gangs list, whatever the fuck that is? I don't know what that is, but uh, no gun list people on the gangs list. 
on the gang's database. Um, if they, well, I mean, if they committed a violent crime, then they're already not able to purchase a gun. Okay, but do you think the FBI should, like, no gun list them? Like, go a little bit harder, do a little bit more, like, upkeep on people like this or whatever? They already did. If they committed Wait, a violent actually, crime— Wait, Just because you're in a gang doesn't mean you've committed a violent crime. You, I mean, I, I imagine mean, you can be flagged other ways, right, to be in a gang? I guess. I don't know. I, I think well, that I'm the just Cook curious. Then, so board, do you think that you should have the ability to no the gun list somebody? gang's database is, is people that have been convicted of, of, of crimes in the past. Okay. So. Do you think you should be allowed to no gun list somebody that has been convicted of, of any crime or is part of a gang? Yeah. If you're convicted of a violent crime, you are. You are not allowed to have a gun anymore. Okay. That's that's a fact. That's the law, I guess. And I guess I I don't know if I'm for that. I haven't given much thought about that. I'm not, I don't know. If well, I'm you were the one that was just pro... freaking out about like the um the, well, what the I'm gang saying list. Is, so is, I don't know. I was just curious what you, what you wanted do. the gang you list to do in terms of like AR-15. Wait, I haven't talked about the AR-15 at all. What is that this pivot? Is, this is what you're doing. You're, no, you're... it's not. I literally told you in our last conversation that I'm chill with AR-15s. It's like 50 murders a year from rifles. I don't give a fuck about right. AR-15s. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right, but the, but this is the approach. This is what this is what I'm getting at. The approach is to make it harder for me to be able to purchase a weapon or purchase a magazine. That's how because, laws work. It makes it harder because, for everyone. Yeah. But but most of the gun crime, most of the crime guns are possessed illegally by gang members, and most of the gun crime is caused by gang members. Why aren't we going after the gang? Why are we going in reverse and actually deleting the gang's database in a lot of cities? Wait, because well, okay, hold on. I got to see this. I got to see this. What is deleting the gang's database? This is like a total, like, we're totally off in that, but I'm really curious what this is. I put it in the chat for you. Cook County Board votes to permanently dismantle gang database. The Cook County Board voted to destroy the country's gang database Thursday, setting legal steps and guidelines to make sure the database can't be restarted. The vote was a death knell for the contentious database, also called the Regional Gang Intelligence Database last month. Cook County announced it had terminated the database. The it came after no other no other law enforcement agency agreed to host it. Okay, so nobody else even wanted to do anything with it? The ordinance, which takes effect immediately, prohibits Cook County Sheriff's Office from maintaining, recreating, or sharing information on the database. It also mandates the Sheriff's Office to enact the final destruction of the tool. Though the tool was terminated, Commission Alma said that wasn't enough. We needed a writing. One of the steps will be a public hearing within the next 90 days. Policy said it may be difficult for people to find the database, find out how it was used. The hearing is most. Policy said database is offline in a secure location. She said it will be destroyed. Contain the names of 25,000 people suspected of being affiliated with more than 400 gangs and gang factions. More than 400 people in the database were listed as dead, and 150 others had a gang listing of unknown or null, according to report. So it sounds like this thing wasn't even useful. Like, apparently no other agency even wanted to host it, and it sounds like there were a lot of errors in the database itself? What she said in her speech was because it contained too many people of color. And this is the same thing that many other Can you find me that speech? Because I don't think you're, I, I'm actually, without even ever having heard this, I have a feeling you're not accurately representing what was being said there. I, you know, I, I, I didn't hear, she didn't misspeak. Mm -hmm. She said it was because it contained too many people of color and that it was borderline racist to have a gangs database with too many people of color on it. This is the exact same thing that Sadiq Khan did. In Whoa! London. Why are we pivoting away to something else? I want to hear, I'm curious about the speech. What I'm so, saying is if, if, if most of the gun crime is, is committed by gang members who illegally possess their weapons, why in the world wouldn't you start cracking down on the gangs? You why do crack down on the gangs. What do you mean? It's illegal well, if you You, don't. you said There's it yourself. You just said it yourself that if you're a felon, you can't own a firearm. You can't sell a firearm to a felon. You can't be in the possession of one if you're a felon. We already do crack down on them. If you get caught with one, you get an arrest warrant for illegally possessing they a firearm. 30,000 30, gangs in this country. 30,000 gangs, a 15% increase from 2006. Obviously, we're not going after the gangs. They cause most hey, of the gun crime oh, oh, with illegally obtained weapons. Okay, illegally you're right. Possessed weapons. Maybe Obviously, we should get rid of something. Maybe we should maybe we should cancel like the war on drugs maybe that would have a much better impact than trying to go after the guns maybe then how about that how yeah. do you feel about that okay fine why why don't you start talking about that instead of saying that it's the gun it's because because right now we're having a conversation on gun control right right we are having a conversation on gun control. so right now i'm going to be talking about guns so, if, for instance, if I was talking about guns and you were like, well, if you really cared about Americans, why don't you talk about getting a single-payer healthcare system? And then I would say, well, because we're not talking about healthcare I right go now, we're talking about gangs. guns. I, I want to go after the gangs and not the guns.
Okay, well, if you want to go after the gangs, right. do you have a lot of videos on your channel talking about how fucking disastrous the war on drugs has been for the United States, wasting the time of cops, wasting the time of the ATF, wasting the time of the FBI, wasting all of our fucking taxpayer dollars, hurting industries and businesses in the U.S., funding cartels in fucking Mexico? Do you have a lot of videos talking about how horrible the war on drugs is, or do you only focus on talking about gangs with a bunch of black people in the background? Whoa, whoa, dude. <laughs> Why do you always have to straw man? This is the same thing that you did in your response video. You were like, well, Yeah, because oh, you're like a, you're like LARPing as like a white nationalist, people. dude. Like, I mean, wait, are we really pretending? What? <laughs> what? Are, seriously? Oh, just because okay, so because I mentioned that forty six percent of the gang members in this country are Hispanic, all of a sudden I'm a, I'm a white nationalist. No, I'm because you're literally in an effort to prove your argument, you literally graph me a state's like with their percentage gun crime and then the percentage of white people in the state. I've That's a very weird thing graphs. for a non racist person to do. I would never even imagine creating a graph like I that. Had the what? reason why I had the graphs, I've already explained this to you in the beginning yeah. of the day in the debate was because I was trying to explain the difference between some states with constitutional carry and other states with co with constitutional carry. Sure, and we've already and we've already demonstrated how all of those arguments are completely non sequitur. So why is it that right. if I go through the some videos on your channel, you why is it that started? every time you talk about gang violence or gang-related shit, why do you always have like just images of like videos of black people and Hispanics in the background? Every time you talk about gun control, why? What? Are you talking about thumbnails and videos now? No, I'm talking really? about Are the actual content of your videos. Everywhere that. I go in your videos, you're just showing images of black people with guns. Why? I'm just curious. It's just I, I very don't know weird. What you're talking about what, what article? You don't know what you're I talking about? Oh, here I can link you your own videos. You, if you're not familiar you, with your own work, what, you what do article your own was video? I referencing? Maybe I was looking at an article or something. Like do that. you want? Well, hey, we can actually watch this if you want. Oh, and it's strange. Anytime you go to peaceful people, you always point out to white people. You know, waving fucking flags of European countries. I mean, we can look at that if you want. I mean, I'm just really curious because it seems like in all of your videos, the video was about. Because right now you're losing so bad that you you're going to I'm a racist or something like that. This is well, this no, is, I, you being is racist is, is not. Well, no, 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 well, not so, an argument. Well, yeah, no, no, I agree, it's not. It's actually not because you could be a not racist and still argument. make great points, but you failed to substantiate a single point you've made so far. So I'm, this is kind of the thing that I'm really curious about. If you want, you here, wait, wait. I'm not the one who's sure. saying. I, I linked you. I linked you a video. Can you times two? We can watch this video together. And I'm really curious if you could talk to me about the imagery you've chosen in the background for this entire video. This 13 Once and a half again, minute. Not an argument. Because it's not an argument. No, but I'm just curious. I just want to know why. Video. I just want to know why what? in your video, every single time you talk about gun violence, you have black people in the Dude, background. This is not an argument. I don't know what <laughs> article you're referencing. I don't know what. I'm, not, I'm referencing your way. own videos, dog. What? Okay, so do you do you want to? I mean, do you want to have actual <clears throat> an actual debate here? Like, well, kind of, but like you don't even understand like the, just all the sources. Every single argument, every single argument that you've like shown me so far, you haven't substantiated with your own data. The Wyoming point fell apart. The Australia thing fell apart. Um, no, saying no, no, the no. districts are getting rid of gun of gang I lists. I, I want to find. I, I think that they can see that your arguments completely fell apart since. Sure. This yeah, and the audiences argument. can decide that. I guess they can look at the graphs and they can look at all the numbers themselves. I'm not scared of any. Thing. I'll, I'll link if, when I'm talking about gangs, maybe there's mm -hmm. like pictures of, of 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 blacks or Hispanics or something like that. That's not my fault. My, that's not my fault that gangs, 46 percent of gang members in this country are Hispanic and 45 percent are black Americans. That's not my fault. How is that my fault when I'm talking or referencing? Wait, an wait, wait. I never so said it was your fault, but wait, 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 wait. Me, you're acting. You're wait, why didn't you just? No, no, no. I never. First of all, so badly. I never called that, you a racist. I'm just asking why they're all black and Hispanic, and now you just told me why. What do you mean? Wait, 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 wait. Why didn't you just tell me that? Wait, why, mean, didn't why didn't you just? They? Why didn't you just tell me that? When I asked you, why is it that all the gangs you show are black or Hispanic? Why did you just say, well, because most of them are? Why did you have to make up a bullshit okay. excuse? I'm in the National Gang Center right now. Yeah. And we can see that the majority are blacks and Hispanic. Yeah, yeah, it's wait. Why fault. didn't you just say that initially? Why did you make up some bullshit because you're about. Just going to like white nationalist racist and all this well, bullshit. No, no, no. Initially, I just asked why. I'm curious why you show all the good guys as white and like wearing these weird fucking Scottish garbs or whatever the fuck, and then, or Canadian shit. And then why is it that all the gang people are black? I'm just curious why you do that. And, and instead of just answering like you just did, because now you I finally, did. well, no, no, now you, you yes, now you did, but we had to fight to get to this point because you were uncomfortable to admit it first, which seems strange to me. I'm just curious why it took you so long to say, well, because most of them are Hispanic and black. Why did you have to get nervous and say, well, I don't know what the video was about. I'm sure you know what your videos are about. You probably do most of this editing yourself based on the fact that a lot of these graphs are literally made by you, which is pretty obvious because a lot of the data is listed in a horribly disingenuous way. Oh, here's your, um, here's your, <laughs> <laughs> the Australia gun thing that ends in 2002. But um, yeah, no, I was just curious right, about that. that but okay. My argument. You, but once again, you're just you, you just keep going back and forth. And, and well, no, I haven't gone back and forth on anything. Like, okay. 
Well, here I'm curious. Okay, so here, so not to go back and forth on the one thing you I'm mentioned erasure. To you mentioned debate here. <laughs> wait, you mentioned erasure of the uh, the erasure erasure the eraser of the of the uh, gang database, and you said that the lady said that she got rid of it because there were too many blacks or Hispanics on it. Can you show me that speech? I, now I'm putting you on the spot here. I don't expect you to be able to reproduce it, but if somebody I could I find can't. it, I have to look into. I have to look into. I was I read through it in one of my videos. I will have to. I'll have to send it to you afterwards. Okay, I'm really curious if somebody could find me that video. I really want to hear her say it's got too many. Oh. Hold on, holy shit, Destiny, here it is. Wait, is there like a video on this page of her saying, I giving that speech? Because I'm very curious <clears throat> if she says they have to get rid of it because there are too many brown people on it. Um, I don't know, I could try to find it in this other, in this other uh, window here. Uh, my point is, if, if we should... If, if we want to reduce gun violence in this country, mm -hmm. and most of the gun violence is caused by gang members with illegally possessed weapons, then we should be going after the gangs, which we're not, because there has been a 15% increase from 2006 in gangs and gang membership. We're, we're at 1996 levels, according to the National Gang Center, which I have on my screen. Wait, wait, right I'm sorry, now. wait, could you, I'm sorry, could you just repeat the last point you just made? Sorry, say okay. that again. I'll link this in the in the chat for you. It appears, according to the National Gang Center, that we are at 1996 levels of g numbers of gangs in the country. This increased since 2002. So it's getting worse year by year of gangs who cause most of the gun violence, which you're so concerned about, with illegally possessed weapons. And it looks like it's getting worse. We're not going after the gangs. My whole point of, of referencing, you know, deleting the gangs database in, in several cities across the country it was because it that would that sounds like that would actually make it worse and not being able to to track a gang members and people who are involved in these gangs who Wait, cause most so of the, the number crime. of gangs looks like it's fallen quite a bit no um, it went from the most recent F estimate of more than 30,000 gangs represents mm -hmm. a 15 percent increase from 2006 and its highest annual estimate since 1996 who this runs is the this? national yeah, gang so center gov i just linked you yeah who run oh <clears throat> um, this is a .gov link. Interesting. I wonder which agency is responsible for updating this. Um, so none of these numbers are listed per capita. Um, there's thirty threat. There's thirty thousand gangs compared to twenty thousand. More gangs are being formed. This is what I'm saying. I'm saying we should be going after these and not going the opposite way and focusing on guns and hindering my right to have a, a you know a thirty round magazine or something like that. It's sure. ridiculous. So in 1996, so in 1996 there were 327 million people. No, no, fuck, wait. In 1996 what? there were no, 200. I'm sorry, yeah. In 1996 there were 270 million people, and today uh -huh. there are 330 million people. Mm -hmm. But we have the same number of gangs as we did in 1996. That means per capita, it's actually fallen. Gangs to people, but we have 1.4 million gang members. We the okay. Gang wait. Members so what, how has the gang members changed? Do you have that? Is that listed here? I don't. I don't know. We can scroll through. Oh, it. estimated number of gang members. So that's actually stayed on the absolute basis, the exact same as well. So according to your source, it's around 850 thousand, and that's actually the exact right. same as it was in 1996. But our population is much higher. And 850, right? Well, that's two to 2012. It actually doesn't have. So in 1996, the number have... of gang members was 846,000. And in 2012, it's 850,000. And it's actually very interesting that those numbers are the same because not only has our population grown, the majority of our population growth has come from Hispanic people who are young and male. So you would actually expect these numbers to be wildly increasing. Right, but it stops at 2012. The point is, is well, that- Well, no, 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 hold on. Well, no, I'm just saying the point, that's very interesting. From 1996 to 2012, I'm pretty sure that the largest growth in our population has been young Hispanic people, especially young Hispanic men. However, the per capita rate of gang members has actually fallen quite drastically. That's very interesting to me. So go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, it is very interesting that the per capita, is it 2012, 800? Yeah, it looks like it's stayed at about 800,000 of, of gang members as, sure. as far as Which is awesome, country. which it sounds like the more Hispanic people the come in, the less that- has the, increased though. And well, but also, not per capita. We have to talk about per capita. Right, we do have to talk about per capita. So the number which, of gangs has decreased. Again, the sorry, the number of gangs has decreased from 1996. No, the number of gangs has increased. Thirty thousand. It is fifth since 
2002, 2002, the number of gangs has increased. It looks like every single year it's increasing. But has it done that as a per capita for the population? Maybe from 2002 it did, not from 1996, though. Right. I mean, we have more gangs to people than any other developed nation in the in the world. That is a totally unrelated to what we were just talking about. I don't know why you keep going back to these random factors. It's not unrelated. Lines. It's if, absolutely if, if, unrelated. If we've already determined that most of the gun crime is caused by gang members. Okay. Okay. So we should be focusing on the gang members and the gangs in this country. We should be trying to combat that. We should not be deleting gangs da- databases. Okay, we I don't think this be... deleting gang database shit, I don't think that this is something that anybody talks about. I've never heard this talking about before. This sounds like some really random thing. Um, somebody pulled the quote here. I also support ending the use of inaccurate, racially discriminatory Chicago Police Department's gang database, which is used to criminalize over 128,000 individuals, a majority of who are black and Latinx. Um, f- false Latin- gang designations. Latinx. Get it right. Latinx. Sorry, Latinx. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that means. False gang designations are then shared with ICE, impacting an individual's opportunity to secure immigration relief. So this person is making the argument that these gang databases just haven't been very effective in terms of police and crime. Well, they made the argument that it's because it has too many Latinx people on it and, and black people. But that's no, be- because... It's sa- I mean, they say false designations. False gang designations are then shared with ICE. Yeah, that's that's the reason that Alma Anaya gave. But uh, I think that uh, there could potentially be more... Um, more other reasons. It, it, sure. I think that I, she I don't usually deal in conspiracy what was, there, what was their quote again? Because it has too many Latinx people on it. What was what was the quote? She said, "I support ending the use of inaccurate, racially discriminatory Chicago Police Department's gang database, which is used to criminalize over 120,000 individuals, a majority of whom are black and Latinx. False gang designations are then shared with ICE, impacting an individual's opportunity to secure immigration relief." Why? I mean, my question is, why would she even mention? Oh, because it has too many. Black or Latinx people. Well, because on if something is discriminatory, question. we probably want to get rid of it. How is it discriminatory, though? Well, it sounds it like because it was false and inaccurate. No, no, it sounds there was only a few hundred that were that were incorrect. I mean, the the gang it had twenty five thousand people. It said more than four hundred were listed as dead, or one hundred and fifty others had a gang listing of unknown or null. That's that's the inaccuracy. That's why we should delete a database of twenty five thousand people. Why not so, go through it and make sure it's correct? Well, and maybe it because to it's too much money. Data. Maybe because yeah. it wasn't very good. Maybe that data was contained elsewhere. So just linking a random article here, and this is only because I've never heard of this before ever. This sounds like some random shit that got posted on the Donald. So some experts the say Donald. there are potential <laughs> problems with how the Chicago Police the Department Donald. tracks suspected gang members in a lawsuit filed. This week against the city, lawyers claimed the so-called gang okay, database. Okay, twenty-five thousand minus what is it? Twenty-five thousand mm-hmm. minus. Uh, let's see, two percent. Twenty-five thousand. I'm just trying to see how much of a percentage of error that was. Wait, you don't know if every single person in that list was vetted, though. It might have been two hundred out of like two thousand looked at, or one thousand looked at. That's two percent. A two percent margin of error. You don't know that though. No, 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 no. no. You don't know that. You don't know if the entire database was vetted before they came up with two hundred. Maybe they only went through a little bit. Maybe there are more problems with it. Why couldn't the city defend them? Why not go through and and make it accurate instead of deleting the entire thing because it had too many Latinx people on there? Because what the lawsuit said, (laughs) what the lawsuit said was that it seemed like it was unfair and ineffective. Ineffective means it didn't work. And according to the first article we looked at, the fact that no other law agency would host that database seems to speak to the idea that it probably wasn't doing a very good job at policing crime. I think that uh, I don't think that we're ever going to agree on how, what the best way to address gun violence in this country is. I'm saying going after the gangs. You're saying it make it harder. Sure. For how people do you want to go after the gangs? Weapons. I don't know. I'm just Wait, saying you have no after, after gun, all of that. You have no prescription whatsoever. If I ask I, you, what do you want to do about gun violence in the United States? You have no answer whatsoever for me. What do I want to do about gun violence in the United States? I want to possibly enhance and increase gangs, gang databases like this. OK, uh, can you show me? Can, sure, sure. can you show me where those gang databases have been effective in policing gangs? Is there evidence of that anywhere or is that just something you feel? That's your, a feeling you have. I don't. I don't know. I'd have to look into what uh, police departments say. Okay. I'd have so to the look fact that you have to look uh, into it, yeah, I understand. Say. So the fact that you have to look into it means that you're telling me a feeling right now. Okay, you have no data to back. Yeah, I'm that just. I'm up. just throwing out ideas. I'm sure. just throwing so out ideas. So do you ideas. have any means tested or effective ways of actually reducing the amount of gun violence in the United States, or do you literally have nothing to appeal to? whatsoever you have no idea what i, you I know it's more important to protect gun ownership for me mm-hmm. because i know that most of the gun crime i don't know how many times we have to say this but most of the gun crime is 
by gang members with illegally possessed weapons. So how do you so want to stop it, them from committing crimes the, with their guns? The logical thing is not to, oh, make it, you know, uh, you can't have uh, t 20 round magazines or something like that, or putting a grip wrap on an AR-15. That's not the logical I, I haven't talked thing. about either of those things, have I? Right, I didn't bring up either. Why do you keep that are being appealing? done? These why, are things why do you that are keep being going, done. Sure, but we've talked These about reasonable things, things right here. Done. We could increase the ability of the ATF to register firearms, maybe. We could make it harder for normal people to acquire firearms. Um, I mean, there are other types of things that we could look at, but you don't have a single solution whatsoever. You want to appeal to your right to own a firearm? If that's what you want to appeal to in front of all the other data, then... Why even talk about the data at all? Why not just say my right to own a firearm is worth people dying in the U.S.? No, it's not worth people dying in the U.S. There's 10,000 or something like that, 8,000 to 10,000 gun murders per year, every single year. And uh, it's not it's not like this large epidemic that keeps growing. No, I mean, if we look since the 90s, it's actually lower right now, today. So it's not... That and, and most of the gun crime is committed by gang members. So I would say go after the people that are doing it, yeah, not how? go after the tool. Oh, this was posted on the Donald. Wow. Was it really? I don't even know what I, I have never been on. It, the that's Donald. my guess, because in all of my digging around related to gun stuff, I've never in my life heard somebody say that a gang database is an effective way of policing gun crime. I've never heard it before. So it sounds like some weird shit that gets posted. To... We'd be. I mean, there's many gang databases. I think I would probably assume that most cities in America, the larger cities, have a, a database of, of gang members because they have to track the gangs. How else does the FBI get the get the information about all the gangs in the United States? I mean, this is like a 72 page report. I'm looking at from the FBI about all the different gang members in in America. So, okay, what does that gang have to do with the individual? But what, what, is the F, what is the FBI? What is the FBI? What is the FBI tracking that have to do with in individual order. cities keeping their own gang database? Because they get the data from individual cities. This is what this FBI report says. So obviously, individual cities have to track their own gangs within their localities. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to obtain this data for this report. Or police could track so, it in federal prisons. I mean, there's other ways to collect this data as well. They could track it in federal prisons as well. But I know that they have mentioned in this report that cities keep their own gangs databases. So many cities throughout America have their own gangs databases. They track these gang members. And so what I'm saying is if, if we really want to reduce gun crime in the U.S., go after the people that are doing it. Go after the majority of people that are doing it and trying to possibly get those guns off the street, which are largely being trafficked back and forth on the black market in in places, you know, that have the, the <clears throat> most gun crime and the most homicide. Okay, cool. So here's like a thing that, um, so here's an article that I, I don't know, somebody's linked me. Ecuador legalized gangs, murder rates plummeted. A stunningly successful experiment. Ecuador has legalized gangs? Upend the mainstream U.S. approach to deviance. Ecuador legalized gangs. And what? In 2007, and murder plummeted. In 2007, the crime riddled nation of Ecuador did something surprising. It legalized the gangs that had been the source of much of the violence. Then something even more surprising happened over the next decade. Murder rates plummeted. Ecuador's approach to violence reduction is about as far away as you can get from America's, which tends to criminalize gangs. To be clear, just being a member of a gang is not illegal, but because many gang members are known to engage in illegal activity, U.S. law enforcement targets people it suspects, suspects of being members. It uses large gang databases, especially common in cities like New York and Chicago, to round up young people, often from poor communities of color. They may be deported or imprisoned for years. When we talk about criminalizing gangs, we're talking about the punitive approach. In Ecuador, the unprecedented decision to legalize gangs across the country is basically a decision to adopt the absolute attitude, blah, blah, blah. I could read through this hard, whole article, but apparently this makes the argument that, um, that criminalizing gangs actually seem to help their violent crime. We'd have to go through it, but... Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, the countries with more gang violence in, in their countries have more gun homicides in their countries. I mean, El Salvador, Honduras, Brazil, uh, probably Ecuador, Mexico. I mean, these are people that these are countries that have more gang violence per 100,000 people. They have a higher homicide rate. So and more gun violence. And in, in, in some cases, it's something like six times higher, more gun violence in, in countries with more gang violence. So um, I'm not sure how decriminalizing gang membership is going to decrease crime. That's I feel like it would be really helpful for these types of things if you would actually investigate like actual research and studies rather than trying to like pick like a few numbers and see if that makes an argument. Because it seems like for a lot of your videos, what you tend to do is you'll go to like an FBI research statistics site. You grab like one or two numbers and then you say, well, look, look at this right now. Why not actually ever like That's source? exactly what you did at the beginning of this debate. You said that the homicide rate decreased in, in uh, Australia 
And so it was because of the gun buyback program. Well, I don't, you know, you're, you're putting your, what are you projecting here? I don't, I don't understand. No, I'm appealing to researchers that typically agree that that probably had an impact on the amount of homicide. I mean, we can go and look up the, the studies if you want. I mean, like the most of this debate has been over the increase in right to carry laws causing more violent crime in a place. And for there, I'm appealing to a study. I wasn't trying to point out one state like Wyoming that didn't no, even support just your saying, point. You, you just brought up that possibly not that decriminalizing gangs and, and letting them form might possibly decrease crime. And and what I said was it wasn't just a couple of examples. I mean, I'm looking at the per capita gun ownership right now um, and the intentional homicide rate of what the per capita gun ownership of, of the U S is much higher than a lot of these countries here. And they have higher homicide rate per 100,000. We're looking at, uh, let's see here. Uh, Philippines, Pakistan, Zimbabwe, Costa Rica, all the way up to the the, the countries that I mentioned, Guinea, Tanzania, I, Ethiopia, I don't know what this... Guatemala, Venezuela, Venezuela, El Salvador, Honduras. These are all countries that it's illegal to purchase a weapon. Okay. And so, once again, if your argument is making it harder to purchase weapons will decrease homicide, I just I think that it's probably the gangs and not that because. Do you have any Hunter, broad studies showing that, or are you just going to throw random numbers at me? No, I'm, I'm. What I'm saying is. No, no, no. What you just did was you just threw a bunch of random numbers at me. Do you actually have like any sort of researcher that publishes something that says, "Hey"? I'm repeating your original point of decriminalizing gang membership equals less crime. I don't know if it would in general. I've never heard of the you gangless said, thing. You just brought that up. No, I brought up that they did it in Ecuador. Okay. And, and, and once again, and going back to your original point of making it harder to purchase weapons equals less gun crime, I'm just saying that that can't be true if there's many countries where it's illegal to purchase a weapon, yet they have six times more gun crime than we do here in this country. Is it easier to acquire a weapon there? Maybe it's easier to acquire one illegally than it is to purchase one legally over here. Right, which is most of the gun crime here. They mostly purchase their weapons illegally. From legal sources have... first, though. I don't know how you don't understand that if it comes from a legal source I don't know first. How you don't understand. I, I, I mean, I, I... Okay, here's the thing, okay? Let's say that I have a store, and that store is called Murder Knives. And I go, and I have a store called Murder Knives. And let's say everybody goes and they buy the homing murder knife, and then they illegally sell them to a friend, and they go out and murder people. Do you not see how maybe getting rid of the store called Murder Knives might decrease the rate, even though the people that are illegally acquiring them aren't buying them from the store? You Can you really not follow that? I don't know. This is something that you mentioned before, too, about brain bullets or something. I, you, now you're bringing up murder knives. Honing can, you, can, can you entertain a hypothetical thought? Are you <laughs> capable of doing that? I am. I am capable of doing that. Okay, so when I tell you something like 60% of the, of the um, murders that are carried out in Chicago are used from guns obtained in Indiana, you don't see how maybe making it harder to obtain a firearm in Indiana might decrease the amount of illegal guns acquired and killing people in Chicago? No, I think it's because of the gangs. Because if your if your argument was correct, if it was because you you can easily purchase the weapon in Indiana, and that's why you have a lot of homicide in Chicago, then Vermont would make New York more dangerous than Chicago because no. you can drive to Vermont, purchase a weapon, and bring it into but New York. But that population might not be that population it's might not. not be as predisposed to crime as another population. The population. Okay, but this is your argument. You're no, not it's talking not. About that, is, that was a non sequitur. Why are you bringing up Vermont? It has nothing to do with what we're talking about. You're, of course, your argument is because it's so easy to purchase a weapon in Indiana, uh -huh. even though most of the gang members per obtain their weapons illegally, a lot of which on the black market and a lot of which they're buying from people, not because they're purchasing it at gun stores in Indiana or at, or at uh, there, there's I think it's a very small percentage of people who are purchasing it at the gun shows, which is what a lot of people talk about as well. Uh, if you're if that argument is correct, then purchasing a gun so easily in Idaho would make or in Idaho would make Seattle more dangerous than Chicago or as dangerous. And maybe the people in Seattle or whatever don't kill us. Maybe the people in Seattle, maybe the people in Seattle aren't as predisposed to crime. Maybe there isn't as much wealth inequality there. Maybe there aren't as many poor people there. Maybe <laughs> there aren't as not the not the causation that you're saying this causes this because what? it's easier to purchase a weapon in Indiana. Okay. This is the, this is causing the homicide rate to be high in Chicago. No, it's not. It's probably more likely the gangs, and that's what I'm. How saying. do the gangs kill people? With guns. And where do they get the guns from? Murder thing. They can. Where do they get the guns from? What? Where do they get the guns from? From many places. We've been over this several different times. Most of them come from Indiana, where they are purchased. 
Uh, they're not walking into legally. a gun store or a gun show and saying, legally me, from sir, Indiana. Sir, let me purchase this this uh, this this weapon here. Typically, a firearm acquired through illegal purchases, straw purchases via surrogates or middlemen, and thefts from individuals, vehicles, residences, and commercial establishments. We're talking about a very large trafficking power problem within the city of Chicago and Detroit and St. Louis and many other cities across America. Not because they can go to indiana or vermont and just say you know excuse me sir let me purchase this high-powered assault rifle that that's what i'm saying that that's my stance on this entire thing i don't know how that was a response to anything i said i, I don't know how you don't see if you make it harder to obtain some guns legally it makes it harder to sell those guns illegally i don't understand how we keep running down like this weird dialogue tree that has nothing to do with the so point many examples it throughout the world of it being Wait, almost why are we talking about examples throughout the world a weapon in Ill, to purchase a weapon legally and yet they have six times more gun crime than we do in some cases that's what i'm saying so that's why i that's don't not a response to what argument. i just said of course that's a response you said you said this is your exact quote i don't understand how you don't understand if making it harder to purchase a weapon legally, that will decrease crime in, in whatever place. What I'm saying is, how can that be true if it's almost impossible to purchase a weapon legally in some countries throughout the world, yet they have higher gun, not just homicide. I don't know. We would have to look at those countries. We do here in this country. Right. That's what I'm saying. You're, you're saying this causes this. And I'm saying, no, it's probably a lot of other things. And I would say more so, you can probably correlate the gangs and the gang members in this country more so than you can the gun ownership or the ease of firearm purchases. That's that's what I'm saying. It's a, probably a lot of things, like you said. Okay. Um, do you have any final points or anything? Um, final points? I, I would say we have to certainly go on to... Su I want to talk about suicide for a minute because this is something that you also express contention with. And you said that easier access to firearms mm -hmm. uh, is, is causes suicides. Okay. So go ahead. Why, why do you think that? <sighs> Let me see. Hold on. The, uh, the accessibility of firearms and risk for suicide and homicide victimization among household members, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Okay? So it's published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. <clears throat> the conclusion being access to firearms is associated with risk for completed suicide and being the victim of homicide. Okay, but how do they know that it was because, oh, you know, I have a firearm in my house. I'm going to commit suicide. Because that's what they studied. Okay, but what I'm saying is, do we not have the easiest access to firearms in this country of any other country in the world? Sure. We do, right? Okay. So that would, that, that would mean that probably per 100,000, our suicide rate should be higher. No, than No, that is totally no. unrelated. How do you think you're making it? Oh, you're, my God. Wait, wait you're your about argument. to do this. Okay, wait. No, so I understand. Let me, I, I, no, no, I know what you're going to make the argument suicide. is. So this you're is actually, I can't believe this. You're going to say, well, what about in these other countries where it's harder to get firearms, but they actually have higher suicide rates? Is that really what you're going to go with? Yeah. Okay, what's the next thing you want to talk about? Okay. No, I want to stick on this. No, 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 no. You, you, you are actually ill-equipped to deal with this data. You don't know how to how to read or understand data. You can't interpret it. No, you have to you, talk about something different. You just keep pivoting. Your argument. I will bet you five hundred dollars right now that we can bring in somebody that is well versed on stats, and they will agree with me. Or one hundred dollars if it doesn't want to seem like a posture. Or twenty five dollars if you want to find somebody that has at least an undergrad and some sort of stats related course that they will agree with me. I don't want to have this conversation with you without bringing on an educated person first, though, because you are incapable of dealing with fact. Uh, you, like you just can't interpret <laughs> Holy statistics. Shit. Dude, why are you so mad? Because I'm trying to why like have screaming? I'm trying to have like a really complicated discussion with somebody that can't read a graph. Like it's really hey. frustrating. Dude, what are you talking about? Just what I'm I saying, said. You're saying that more access to guns. No, 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 no. That's no, no, no. In the United States, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't going to be other predictions for causing suicide all across the world. 
Just right. that, that, there's a million different variables I mean, that can account they, for that. They, they might feel you know, there could be a whole bunch of things, but just because they have an access to firearm doesn't mean that it, that's they wouldn't have done it otherwise. That's what no, it does. That's the point that of a study. What you do that. is you take households that have similar breakdowns and the type of people there as other households. Then you compare for number of suicide attempts, and then maybe you look at the number of successful suicides, and you see that the people that have guns, all else equal compared to the people that don't have guns, are more likely to successfully complete a suicide. Suicide. That's how you would do that type of study. We wouldn't then say, well, what about people in Japan? That has no bearing on the question we're asking whatsoever. And then I will re-offer again, if you could please find somebody with just an undergrad and some sort of some sort of stats background to come on here and moderate this conversation, I will gladly pay for their time. I would love to have that conversation because this is like insane right now. Like I, I like the arguments that you're making are so non sequitur. They're like impossible to address. No, they're not. They're not. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious to a lot of people that these arguments make a lot of sense. Your arguments are ridiculous. You're saying that because it's easier for me to purchase a firearm, it's easier for us as Americans to purchase a firearm, that somehow causes a, a higher uh, suicide rate in this country. That's what I'm saying. Yes. I would argue that it's probably a myriad of a whole bunch of other things that probably leads to suicide not because it's an, you know, you could probably potentially kill yourself with a gun easier than a lot of different That's things. That's the whole point. But, uh, if but, you have a but, firearm in your house, knife, you are I more likely to successfully- Grab a knife and slip my wrist faster than I can load my well, magazine. it seems like that pistol. doesn't happen. So I don't know how, you can argue with the researchers if you want, but I mean, right yeah. now we can both play this game. Let's go to Google Scholar and let's type in suicide access to firearms, enter. The first one, acts cited by 191 things. This might even agree with you. Who knows? Let's check. Elderly white men are at the highest risk for suicide. Firearms are the most common method of suicide used by young men and women in later life. And a greater proportion of older than younger suicide victims use a gun. The psychological autopsy um, study aimed to test hypotheses concerning the risk for suicide associated with access to violence. Subjects included 86 suicide victims aged 50 years of older and 86 community control subjects individually matched on age, sex, race, and county of residence. Presence of a firearm in the home was associated with increased risk for suicide even after controlling for psychiatric illness. Elevated risk was accounted for, for by access to handguns rather than long guns and was more pronounced in men than women. Among subjects who kept a gun in the home, storing There's the weapon- no way that they can know Wait, that that's what the study is for! What are you talking about? What are you talking about? There's, how do you know these, these people committed suicide? How do you know? That's that, what they that, do in the study. Can we play here? Can we play science? Man? Here, you do this. Have, okay, you do this. I'm going to wait. No, no, I'm going to wait for no, you to do no this for me. Okay? No, that they wouldn't have killed themselves if they didn't have a gun in their house. There's absolutely no way to know that. Okay. Can you go How ahead then? Can you start to know that? Can you start? It's impossible to study anything, I guess. Is that's your argument no, no, you want to no, go it's with? It's impossible to know that they wouldn't have killed themselves if they didn't have a gun in their house. That's, that's why you use controls. That's why we have variables. You'll match two things up that are very right. like one another, right. and then that's you look at the one variable that's different, so you can say, hey, this guy is exactly firearm. like this guy, except for this one variable, which in this case happens to be a firearm in the home, and then we can see if that variable changed the outcome of the thing that we're testing. It's called science, a scientific method. I don't understand how I'm answering these questions for you. What are you talking about? No, that's uh, that's that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that there's probably many factors that go into someone who commits suicide. I'm not saying what I'm saying is if if we look at the and and this is not a non sequitur. This is this is an actual question here that I have for you. Because of the ease of access to firearms in America, because it's so easy for people to purchase firearms in America, and then we look at other countries that don't have that ease of purchasing firearms. Would okay. you no, not? No, see no this that's not. That's a non sequitur. It's not related. A higher suicide rate okay. can you, in sure. America than gonna, in those 10, 10 countries that are above us. Your whole chat can I, fight against I, me. Yeah. Your whole chat can fight against me, okay? Can you please go onto Google Scholar right now and substantiate anything you're saying with some sort of study that shows that having access to firearms does not have a noticeable impact on suicide? I would love that. Your whole chat can work against me right now. I would love to see these studies. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, let's move on. The last thing I want to address <laughs> You can't is... substantiate the point. Yeah, All right, whatever. what's the last thing? The last thing I want to address is... Uh, you brought up something, I think, when we were at the Jesse Lee Peterson show. You said that um, it's you said that the CDC hasn't been able to do a single study into gun violence in 20 years because of the NRA. I don't and know. I, I said brought in 20 up years, that, but I think they've done one in 2013, didn't they? They did, and that that's what I brought up. I brought up that 2013 study, mm -hmm. uh, 
by the CDC, which referenced the defensive use and offensive use of guns in this country. I said anywhere between three, anywhere between 500,000 and 3.5 million defensive gun uses versus about 200,000 offensive gun uses. And I brought that up. And uh, what was your issue with that? It doesn't tell me if those were successful or not, or if owning a gun helps you defend your house. Right. And so the, the point that you brought up was that it's you have studies or data that shows that it's 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 more effective to use something like a bat or, or something else than a gun. Correct. That seems to be the data that I found. Yes. So then my question to you is um, if it's more effective to use a bat or something like that of defending your house. And this is something that you that you lied to me about. And I asked you because I saw something and I asked you about it and you lied to me. Why in the world did you pull out a Glock on your stream as soon as you heard some weird noises bumping around in your house. I don't know, but this is totally unrelated to this argument. No, it's not, but why didn't you pull out a bat? Probably and why did you I didn't lie? have you a bat at the time. Remember doing, you said you didn't remember doing it. This is one of the most popular videos of you on YouTube, and someone sent it to me. Wait, and I was how many like, oh, views does I, it have? I legit don't remember this. How many years 2000, ago? 82,000 views, 382,000 I have views. multiple videos with millions of views. I don't know what an 82... Is it even posted on my channel? I have no fucking idea what your video you're talking about. I mean, I'm sure it's happened. I have a We talk about firearms a lot on my stream, but what does this have to do with anything? But what I'm saying is you pulled out a Glock and you said, I'm not getting robbed today. And this is... And you, 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 <laughs> you pulled out a Glock on stream, you loaded it, and you said, I'm not getting robbed today because you heard a weird noise. And I asked you about this. You would have remembered this if you were honest with how, me. Wait, how could you possibly... Okay, somebody linked me the video. This is from 2014. This was five years ago. I don't know what the fuck... Dude, I've done a fuck ton of shit on stream before. Why do you assume that I would remember okay. this three-minute excerpt from my stream? I mean, if it's, if it's more effective to use a bat to defend your home, why did you pull out your gun? It's possible that back then, I probably had a worse understanding of whether or not guns were an effective means of protecting your property. So you would pull out a bat today? I don't know. I don't own a bat today. Would you pull out a knife or, or something like that? Or something other than your, your Glock? I, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. How, what does this have to do with the data? I was just asking. I mean, it's Well, no, no, you're not just asking. I mean, it, you're trying to frame like my individual opinion. You're trying to frame my like my individual opinion like it's going to argue with the data. So like, let's say that I had a killer meta-analysis, which I kind of do, that totally proves my point, which it totally does. You think that somehow by appealing to the fact that I might do something that might be suboptimal, that all of a sudden that means that um that I'm wrong? Here's a question. Do you think that texting and driving increases your risk for getting into a car accident? Probably, but you know, you want to know what I text and drive too. Does that mean that I disagree with that evidence? I'm just saying. No, 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 no. Hold on. No, I'm curious. So uh, you know what? You, if you watch me. You if you, me. I didn't lie I to you. you. I didn't lie to you, dude. I don't remember everything I fucking do on stream. This is a clip from five fucking years ago. I have no idea. All right, Destiny. Thank you for coming on. Well, wait, wait, hold on. Wait. Do you have any evidence that shows that self-defense gun use is actually an effective means of protecting your property? To refute the evidence that I've given you that it's not. I I would certainly I'm not going to be pulling out a bat instead of uh, instead of a gun though that's for sure I all that's all I know. So you know nothing is what you're saying. You, no, you I, have I, no I data. Okay, cool. Defensive gun use is anywhere between five hundred thousand and three million. As a matter of fact, California just released the ban of high capacity magazines because the judge argued that there were multiple cases of women running out of ammunition defending their home. There are, as a matter of fact, I think I have a video when I first started my channel of like a hundred clips of people defending their home successfully with a firearm. You think 100 clips of videos I'm not saying it's just because of 100 point? clips. I'm saying that I'm okay, going sure. so to I, yeah, I okay, rather yeah, okay. defend my home with a firearm instead of something sure. else. And so would you. Okay, and so I, yeah, I understand. Other. I can't argue against Fields' arguments. I can only go by what the data shows me. You're a huge like Fields over Reels guy, and I can't argue against that. No, you are. So You're the one the who results that I have of this study is of over 14,000 <laughs> incidents, so of over 14,000 incidents in which the victim was present, 127 involved a self-defense gun use. Self-defense gun use was more common among males in rural areas away from home against male offenders and against offenders with a gun. After any protective action, 4.2% of victims were injured. After self-defense gun use, 4.1% of victims 
victims were injured, very, very slightly less. In property crimes, 55.9% of victims who took protective action lost property. However, 38.5% of self-defense gun use victims lost property, which is much lower. However, 34.9% of victims who used a weapon other than a gun lost property. Those are the numbers that I'm familiar with. If you have a study that refutes that, not something that just says a gun was used this many times, but the number that shows the successful amount of gun uses versus other types of defenses, that would be data that we could have a discussion about. I can't talk about your feelings about guns. That doesn't tell us that if they had their gun, they would choose their gun instead to defend their house. It would if they, these are just people that didn't, that they had, you know, a bat or something else and they defended their home and they were more successful than what people that had, had guns. Gun in their house? What if they had a gun in their house? I don't know. Do you have data that if supports that? Possibly there was more break-ins for people that had no guns in their house than there were. Oh, for cool. People then guns do you have house. a study in Jacksonville or Chicago or one of your there. favorite cities that shows that owning a no. gun is more likely to make you safe? Ridiculous. In particular, 2013 study ordered the CDC, the Center for Disease Control Prevention, mm-hmm. CDC, and conducted the National Academies Institute of Medicine and National Research Council reported that defensive gun use of guns by crime victims is a common occurrence. All Almost mm-hmm. all national survey estimates indicate that defensive gun Gun uses by victims are at least as common as offensive gun uses by criminals, okay. with estimates of annual uses ranging from about 500,000 to more than 3 million okay. in the context of 300,000 violent crimes involving firearms. So we're talking... Whoa, 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 wait, 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 are you done? Wait, I thought you were going to tell me how successful those were. What if every single one of those was a failure? Your, your, study, that you, your study that you linked and you read off to me mm-hmm. said that people defending their homes with some other object Mm -hmm. were more successful in defending their homes or having less property loss or whatever than people who have had who had guns in their home were successful. That's that, that's what your study says. And I'm asking you to tell me, tell us that if they had a gun in their house, would they be more successful? That just tells us that probably there were more break-ins of people with no gun in the home because gun ownership is like 40% or something like that of adults. So that just tells us that there were more break-ins of people with no guns in the home than than there were with people with that with guns in the home. That just that that's all that that tells us. That's an interesting hypothesis. I would love it if you had some data to substantiate that. All that I know is I'm I'm looking at a video on screen right now of you pulling out a gun instead of a bat. <laughs> I think that I like that ending point. I think that is this argument in a nutshell. Thank you for your time, buddy. Good luck. All right, take care.